So, shall we play a game? I don't know. I'm just here. We'll see if we'll play a game. See if anybody hangs out or not. I'll just sit here and ramble on, man. Ramble on about baseball. Hopefully everybody had a good day. And all kinds of stuff. Good stuff like that. So we've been doing our Ned McGreevy League, which has been really, really cool. Really, really fun. And um, what else have we been doing? I don't know. We're gearing up, right? We're gearing up. Pitchers and catchers report in about, what, 30 days or less. We're getting there. Even though the baseball season is going to be very, very crazy, it's coming. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. So, there's Robbie Wartburg. Robbie Wartburg is here to chat some baseball or whatever. Good evening, oh, Robert Wartburg. Oh, Robert Wartburg, how are you doing tonight? I see you did two. You did a doubleheader. Uh, Federal League doubleheader you did, right? So that's cool. That's cool. I'm I'm well, Robbie. I am not unwell. And I hope that you are well and therefore not unwell as well. It's just one of those nights, man. Just not sure what I want to do, but figure just come on for a bit and see what people are into doing. Whether that's just talking baseball or talking about other stuffs or what have you. Um, Robbie says, yes, I am. Have you seen the crazy going on in the out-of-park forums? I have not. What have I, what have I missed? What crazy goings on in the out-of-the-park fora? What, what's going on there? I have been busy working, 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 and finally have a day off tomorrow. Yay. So what's been going on, Robbie? Enlighten me, enlighten me. I usually don't start visiting the out-of-park forums till like February, but, um, Maybe I should be checking it out. So what's going on? And hey, I'm up to 298 subscribers, man. So thank you to Greg Lang, newest subscriber, um, and a an appreciator, an aficionado of Diamond Mine Baseball. So that makes uh, I think four of us in the community now. Steve Tate was a former Diamond Mine baseballer as well. So, we are out there. We are out there. Lock your daughters away. Um, they released an update yesterday addressing the licensing with the Japanese League and the players aren't happy. I don't play Japanese League, so I'm not really sure what, what, why are people unhappy. Should, should I look? Should I look while we're on our, on our little um, greetings, Professor Falcon? Um, let's, let's see what's going on. Let's see what people are upset about. Again, I don't play... Um, Japanese League Baseball, but let's, let's, let's see what people are, if people are like having a good wank or something, let's see, what are they wanking them out? Walk down memory lane, blah, 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 fixing broken links, blah, 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 must be in the baseball one itself. Um, information about the Nippon Pro, alright, let's read this. Hello, everyone, Marcus Heinz on course, I should do it with a German accent, because he's yeah, hello everyone. I need to share some sad news today. We recently had a talk with our parent company, come to US, about the Nippon Pro Baseball League. And come to US asked us to remove all the data concerning this unlicensed league from out of the park. Oh, well, it's unlicensed. Mm, I see. Uh, the reason is updated come to US license policies regarding Nippon. Nippon Pro Baseball League data. So moving forward, we'll remove the Jap we're just going to say Japanese Pro League uh, from the game in an upcoming patch, probably tomorrow, and also remove all Japanese League-related mods from our official mods forum. Sorry for the inconvenience this causes for users that liked Japanese baseball. Uh, we'll do our best to find a ways that Japanese baseball... Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
Hey, there's C. Brandon is a is a diamond mine baseballer. Clee baseball fan. Good evening. All right. Well, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. And and so there's two sides to this argument. First, Marcus admit right he admits he admits that the, that, that that property, if you will, Nippon Pro Baseball was unlicensed. So kind of a bad move on their part to do that because everything else in out of the park baseball is licensed as far as we know. We know major league baseball is licensed. We know minor league baseball is licensed. I'm not sure about you know what what does that mean for the other international leagues? Has the Dutch professional baseball league um, they have professional baseball. Italy has professional baseball. Some other places. So, but what maybe they fail to real, realize in Nippon Pro Baseball is out of the park baseball is like the biggest test, like baseball text based sim on the planet. It, it it is as much as we play other great ones and we do. It it's the biggest. It's it has the most exposure. I mean it's it's on Steam. You know, it does have that, that official license. And I think that uh, maybe Japanese professional baseball either looking for some more bucks or they're just not seeing um, the opportunity there to um, get people more aware of Japanese baseball. Um, so I think before out-of-the-park users bring out the pitchforks and the torches, and you knew that was coming, um, how hard would it have been for Out of the Park Baseball or their uh, Korean parent company come to U.S., right? Talk to the powers that be at Japanese Baseball and say, we'd really be very honored to um, have the license. So I get the people are upset, but, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you've got Com2 U.S., they're a pretty big corporation, and then you've got Japanese Major League Baseball, and, you know, unfortunately, what can a lot of gamers do? Um, I think you just got to move forward. You got to move forward. Um, I'm sure, for instance, that, you know, the Major League Baseball licensing um, out of the park had to go through a lot of hoops for that. Major League Baseball just, just doesn't toss out endorsements. In fact, <coughs> to my knowledge, there's only two baseball games digital baseball games are, that are endorsed by Major League Baseball and that's Out of the Park Baseball and MLB The Show. Um, I don't know, maybe RBI Baseball, although you know, that's not such a very good game, but it's kind of the only sort of MLB The Show type game there is on out there, unless you count. I mean, it uses real players, right? I mean, certainly Super Mega Baseball 3, which is deceptively deep. It's deceptively deep once you look past the cute cartoony graphics. There's a seriously good baseball sim in there. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, Robbie says there also seems to be the issue of Konami having exclusivity too. Well, yeah, you can't have right exclusivity, right corporate rights to things, rights to intellectual property. That's a real big deal. It would be like, um, so now that um, you know most of the Beatles catalog is back under the control of you know Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, and the estates of George Harrison and John Lennon, but let's say back in the day it would almost be like Sony having exclusive rights, and you know somebody else having like say Capitol Records having exclusive rights. It just doesn't work like that. That it's the exclusive, right? Is is the legal buzzword right there? And, and I think, without knowing anything, just going by, by Marcus Heinsohn's admission, I think that they screwed up. And they just put that in there, and they probably shouldn't have done it. So um, hopefully they'll do it right. And for those who, who play, you know, like to sim Japanese baseball, I hope it comes back for them. And I certainly hope... Um, that out of the park doesn't screw up his Major League Baseball licensing because the way the game's structured now, losing that, you might as well just shoot the game dead. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not really worried about the whining, right? And the whining doesn't mean anything because 
I mean, I'll look if you'd like, but let me see if it's going to let me open it. There we go. Let me see. Previous thread was closed to people, blah, 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 blah. In this case, out of the park decided to damage a product they sold to us. Possibly sold to us illegally. It's not said a word, but since we know they haven't informed the moderators of anything either, they changed it to yelling at clouds. Well, yeah, but see, this is exactly what I'm saying. Clown show. A bit odd to intention. Click on the thread. You don't care where blah, blah, blah. Consider stopping Fathom Park. Consider compensating me for my time lost in league creation. Legitimate bitches on the sides of the players. I'm not saying that there isn't. But on the other hand, you know, the, 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 it does beg the question, were any attempt, were there any attempts made to, to talk to, um, you know, the Nippon Professional Baseball League. So there's lots of stuff that we're, we don't know. There's not, or we're never going to know. I mean, what I think what will happen, um, you know, there's one guy that's, that's claiming that Marcus and the Out of the Park developers, that their hands were tied. Um, were they tied, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that. Because, again, he says that they included an unlicensed product. Now, the way around it is what a lot of baseball games do. Don't use the logos, right? The players themselves are, are I mean, hard to think about this. The players themselves are public domain. That's why we can have games like Action PC, uh, Baseball, and Diamond Mind, and all the others, all the cards and dice games that we can play. Because the law says they are celebrities. They are public figures. So there would have been a way around this that they wouldn't even gotten into a legal hassle. But, you know, I, I, I think just reading Marcus's introduction or Marcus's announcement that it was unlicensed says it all to me right there how the park screwed up well of course and they're not going to say anything Robbie that's that's this is this is about intellectual property IP law is huge I mean it's always been around you know because you always had entertainment lawyers and stuff like that but now of course with the explosion of internet social media everything like that intellectual property law is the single largest area of the law that is absolutely just booming, exploding, and going everywhere. Intellectual property lawyers make lots of money. They get paid lots of money to protect brands, trademarks, copyrights. In fact, there's going to be a change to the cut. They've already started taking effect. So before, copyright violations were merely civil penalties. Now, in some cases, copyright infringement can also bring with it um, criminal as well. Why do I know this? Am I a lawyer? No, but the jobs that I did for Penn State University and University of Michigan, um, I had to, I was pretty much in charge of copyright compliance um, and fair use as it concerned uh, the university libraries at Penn State for the university libraries as a whole, at the University of Michigan for the Ross School of Business Library. And so I had to be very, very up to date on copyright, trademark, um, and in the case of Penn State, patent regulations and laws. Because, let's say, I would have allowed to pr a professor, for instance, so fair use under copyright law says that you can use so much of a source in an ac for an academic resource and you use it one time without asking permission. Just, you, you don't even, you, you can just use it. That's fair use. And in fact, you'll see people on YouTube Disclaimer, right? Um, we're showing this um, under you know the provisions of the fair use right, of the Copyright Act, right? Now, if a professor had used um, a resource for two years, for a second, another year in a row, and didn't cite or didn't seek permission, it could have cost the universities I worked for literally millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, it's th it's no different in out of the park baseball, right? So, in terms of international copyright convention, 
they could have they, they, they got away with it last year they didn't this year and possibly com to us and out of the park well out of the park is owned by com to us maybe they need a better team of legal eagles hey big clue at the end of the day there's nothing players can do about it and let's face it and 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 I'm not and please don't take this the wrong way the majority of baseball fans are not interested in playing Japanese baseball right simming Japanese baseball look at our channels how many of us do Japanese league baseball in any of these baseball sims I don't Al doesn't um, I don't think Christopher Slovak does um, you know I, I, I jester jesters jester only even does a small part of baseball history just modern American baseball you've never tried it so and I'm not no, I mean Japanese baseball is something that should be respected and some great stars Ichiro Suzuki full stop Sadoharo O full stop but right and we're seeing more and more players from Japan from Korea baseball's a religion over there but at the end of the day with all the whining going on that there is out of the park right it's just it's just an, an easy error on the infield which is they, they completely flubbed it could have turned the 6-4 double play and instead they did but in, in, in the larger scheme of things I don't think it's really gonna matter I don't and there's nothing rewards worst gamer coming in right it's just Kurt loves his Japanese baseball yeah I think Japanese baseball is awesome but out of the park dropped the ball they didn't license from the Nippon Pro League Baseball. Hopefully, they they did with the others again, with with the leagues that are in the Netherlands, with the leagues that are in Italy. Hopefully, they didn't screw up there. And they do have those licenses. But then, if not for those who play international leagues, you know, you want to play Dutch baseball, you want to play, uh, you know, baseball in Italy, whatever, could be the same fate. Hey, 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 Ken Castro coming in saying good evening, cool kids. So I don't know, Robbie. In the larger scheme of things, I think it's a tempest in a teapot. And as someone mentioned on those out of the park forums, if you bought it right from out of the park baseball, just don't apply the new patch. I applied it without knowing it. It doesn't bother me. I've never fired up Japanese League Baseball. There's too much, and I hate to say this, but we did invent the game. We invented the game. You know, I mean, I've lived in other countries. I, I, again, Holland has professional leagues. I lived in Holland. Ireland, baseball is picking up steam there. Um, it's kind of cool to see that happening. Um, you know, there's the London series every year. There's more and more British baseball fans. It's never going to be, you know, what cricket is or um, anything like that, but it's picking up some steam. Australia has bona fide Major League Baseball. Um, but at the end of the day, there's too much. Um, and when I say Major Leagues, I include also the Negro Leagues in that because they are Negro Leagues. There's so much American baseball, right, to to explore. I, I, it doesn't really bother me at all. And I know that sounds terrible. I don't really care that it's gone because I, I would never touch it. I don't buy out of the park baseball because I can play Dutch baseball or Italian baseball or Japanese or whatever. I really don't. I don't care. I can read about it. Um, I, I just don't care myself. I appreciate you bringing it up though, Robbie, but it just doesn't. I, you know, out of the park baseball screwed up. Pure and simple. Big clue Ireland's leprechaun population be a natural talent pool for shortstops. Big clue. Oh, my goodness. World's Worst Gamer said, honestly, he was hoping Japanese, uh, or actually PC would start getting to providing Japanese baseball. Well, but he can do it. Right? Yeah, capitalism does ruin things. And, and right, it, you, you have two entities, Nippon League Baseball, and then you have on the other side, Com2 US, the parent company of Battle Park Baseball. Right? We can, we can whinge and say, well, we're going to vote with our wallets, but we're not going to. So, can action can action PC baseball do b Japanese baseball? Absolutely, those stats are public domain, right? 
So just you know, you know, so we created like you're looking at this draft league I have set up here. It's just sitting here. This 1960s league. Those are fictional, um, right? Those aren't like there's there's not a there is a Toledo baseball team, but that Toledo that's not the Toledo Mud Hens, blah blah whatever. These are all this is a draft league of Major League Baseball players, right? There's no copyright being infringed upon here. Uh, baseball statistics aren't copyrighted. Right, they are they are considered under copyright law. Something that was done. This is a record. It's history. Just like you can't copyright history. So Action PC could do it. And if, if look all over this Action PC baseball league, or this Action PC baseball game. Look anywhere. You're not going to see endorsed by Major League Baseball or statistics used by permission of Major League Baseball. You don't need permission. You don't need anybody's permission to use baseball stats at all. They are in the public domain. So Action PC could do it, and they'll do it right if they do it. Um, and I know there's Japanese homebrews out there for all kinds of games. So this isn't a knock on Japanese baseball at all. It's a knock on the the legal team at Out of the Park Baseball dropping the ball and not getting in touch with the powers that be in Japan and saying, hey, dudes, we would like to um, have an official licensing. For those of you missing this, Robbie bringing up at the very beginning when I first came on, um, there's a bit of a brouhaha, which I think is a tempest in a teapot, um, about Out of the Park Baseball having to remove Nippon League uh, properties, so logos, things like that, and of course the players, because as Marcus said, they used an unlicensed product. And I don't even see, you know, if people want to bitch and say, then they should say, well, okay, so so why didn't you get this done? But people are whining, well, I put all this time into my league. Well, I get that you're complaining, I, I get where you're going to be a bit butthurt about that, but at the end of the day, there's not really a lot the Com2 US is going to do because Out of the Park knows its demographic and it knows that it is not going to lose a significant amount of players. Now, if Out of the Park Baseball had somehow violated its agreement with Major League Baseball and the Major League uh, Baseball Players Association, then you would have serious trouble. You would have serious, serious trouble. And believe me, also at the end of the day, though they'll never admit it, Marcus and company, in my opinion, therefore I can't get sued by saying that, in my opinion, they are going to dot every I and cross every T and punctuate everything properly such that even Samuel Johnson would blush. They're not going to do anything to lose that coveted Major League Baseball and Major League Baseball Players Association um, endorsement and licensing. They are never going to do that because you know what? You look at that out of the park, uh, look at out of the park baseball, You, they could use those logos. Look how we have to do it in here. We have to just find logos that are out there and use them. But Dave's not liable because Dave's not including. If you look at the logos, if you buy Action PC Baseball, look in your logos folder, you're not going to see the official trademarked that's that little R down there means a little these you know because these logos are just copyrighted they're trademarked and trademark law is even stricter than copyright right and so and and, and the government is not going to get involved with all of us to play action PC baseball or play diamond mind or you know you go into the cards and dice realm inside pitch or PC replay baseball or replay cards and dice they're not going to go around to each gamer and say like to our Red Sox fan for instance who plays a ton of these different games. Well, Mr. Red Sox fan, you're in violation of um, United States trademark and copyright, and so you can't use the the Boston Red Sox. They're not going to do that. So it's 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 really. I would be surprised, seriously, in April of 2023, if action if if out of the park baseball didn't sell any units because they screwed up on the Nippon League. Just not going to happen. You know? Yeah, exactly, exactly, big clue. Very few out-of-the-park customers asked for that part of the game. I didn't ask for it. 
Um, oh, talk about, yep. Ken Castro says, speaking of Ireland, he's late because he's owned out. The genius of Rory Gallagher. Ha, we could do a whole stream on just um, gr great rock musicians that nobody's ever heard of, right? Rory Gallagher. Jimi Hendrix thought Rory Gallagher was a god. And that should say something right there. Eddie Van Halen thought Rory Gallagher was like the greatest of all. Rory Gallagher was sick. What an amazing guitar player. So good reason to be late. Um, Todd says, don't ever trust a company uses an acronym. Hmm. Um, for Big Clue says, for those of you old enough to remember World Wide Web was new in Major League Baseball, actually went after a few individual fan sites for using MLBT logos. Yeah, they did. They did. And they absolutely did. So, yeah. yeah except for APA. Right. Hmm. So, I don't know. So I thought maybe we just, I mean, this isn't our official why I love baseball chat, but I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I actually felt like doing a game. People want to do a game, we can do a game. We can just sit here and bullshit for a little while. You know, until somebody comes on and does whatever. Um, hopefully find Steve Tate tomorrow and play a little head-to-head -head baseball, whatever. I'll do a, a baseball for Windows game early, er, in the afternoon. Tomorrow, day off, yay. So that's cool. So how's everybody doing? How the hell are you doing, reprobates? You guys doing well? Todd says, Out of the Park is owned by Com2US. Yep. Isn't that a... It's one of the corn. Corn. Ken, of course, interested in agricultural products, has a platinum membership to a site devoted to corn. C-O-R-N, YouTube. Corn. So, I, it may be. So, Com to us Com to us Korean company with deep pockets, man. So, deep, deep pockets looking to... And they're, they're allowing out of the park baseball to pretty much just keep developing as, as if it's still their own company. So, we'll see what the future brings. But luckily, luckily we have, you know, all these other games we can play. So, I'm not too terribly alarmed. And I think everything's going to be fine in the end. Todd wastes no time. Exactly. Big Clue spent his day um, training noobs at work. One asked me about one change I'd like to see in our department 2023, and I said new owners. Sounds like the Pittsburgh Pirates. New owners. I was talking to a guy at work today, big baseball fan, big Buccos fan, and you know, we were really happy that Kutch is going to come back, probably for his final year in baseball, and provide some um, leadership you know, to this young team like O'Neill Cruz and stuff, but we have Reynolds on the trading block. Here we go again, Pittsburgh Pirates. Ugh. Anyhow. Um, so Ken said 19th century game was 16 errors by one team yesterday. Oh, nice. Big Clue says, he, he says, I saved my bacon when they were share, uh, staring at me dumbfounded by saying, sorry, I thought you were asking about my baseball team. Good save. Good save. Good save. Good save. Nice. 16 errors. Well, when yep, no baseball gloves, so there you go. Still, it was fun, right? So, so I won't I, again. Ken, um, Ken and I, every once in a while, keep it. You know, a little. We find a little baseball uh, bits and bobs. We'll we'll kind of share them. And uh, I, I, Ken didn't tell me who, and it doesn't matter, but. I guess in some sort of semi-erudite baseball chat, quote unquote, somebody was knocking an old Haas Radborn, and I'm not going to say what they said. It doesn't matter. It's like, but it's it's the ignorance of the national pastime, and its history is absolutely just rampant. It is rampant. It is astounding. It is shameful by people who call themselves baseball fans. Come on. Old Haas Radborn, man. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get a mention names. But but in other news, I also haven't... Um, the person who discounted whoever that was, and I do know that channel, um, who discounted dead ball baseball and stats out of hand as being unreliable. Um, and I know this community is large enough 
I also know there's six people in here, one like. I know there's been some, but nobody has come forth and said, okay, Beatles, I'll debate you. No, no one. The, the, the people from there, that channel that made that assertion, nobody's come forth to debate me. So um, I guess that's dead in the water because the truth hurts. Biatches, whoever said that out there. Um, how many people go to church regularly even though the smallest bit of history of their own denomination religion? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, big clue. I can I can certainly say that as a, not only a study, a person who, um, who is absolutely fascinated by belief systems, but who's a convert, right? So I was raised Roman Catholic. I left, uh, I left not only the church, but Christianity for a while. Then I did a little bit of what people do. They do church shopping and stuff like that, but studied deeply what each of the denominations believed. Nothing was clicking. I even went, you know, was Wiccan for a while, so jumped out of Christianity, the whole thing. And through studying and everything, I found myself back in ancient Christianity um, as an Eastern Orthodox. But, you know, I'm looking into Byzantine Catholicism, which is pretty much Orthodoxy, except it's a communion with Rome. But you're right. Um, you know, I had somebody say to me, I was talking about, uh, and I don't want to get into religious discussion, but saying, but I'm not a Protestant, I'm a United Methodist. It's like, okay, you need to really go back and you need to read the history of your faith. That while it is true that John Wesley had no, he, had, he, he himself, right, as the church that John Wesley founded was very Catholic. They had daily mass, the whole thing. It was after John Wesley's death. John Wesley is buried as an Anglo-Catholic priest. Anglo-Catholic priest in the Anglican Church. His sons, right? And what we know, of course, the United Methodist Church is uh, about to go through a serious schism now, which is kind of scary for if you're a United Methodist, you should be concerned. <coughs> but how many people know about American history? It took what? Until... Was it 2017 that we finally had a national monument to the First World War? Everybody trots out all the deaths that we had in all these wars, but World War One always forgotten, always forgotten, and yet in 10 months we lost more in the First World War than we did in all of Vietnam. Um, and I can tell you from having both perspectives as an American, as a European, American people, and I'm not saying you guys, but Americans are largely woefully ignorant um, of the history of this country it, it's 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 shameful it's shameful big clue <laughs> he's going to protestant so there we go they sure as hell don't learn about it in school no they don't brandon says recently finished a full season replay 2014 all teams full schedule took three years apple for windows Congratulations to Brandon Breen. Wow. That is awesome. That is awesome. Robbie's been going, what, four years? Or going on four years now with 1908 on Baseball for Windows. Three years. Amazing for you, Brandon. Um, so many. That, that's, that is a huge accomplishment. It really, really is. I am, I am not in any way being facetious. That is phenomenal. Way to go. Um, Ken says the problem with playing 19th century baseball sims is there's no one to tell. There's no one to tell about it. Well, there's me. Uh, but it's more special. Yeah, it's, it's even more niche than the specialty, uh-huh, right, that, that your friends watch. No, it's, but it's true. It's, ex it's, it's, it's absolutely niche. It, it, 19th century baseball is more niche than dead ball. Way more niche than dead ball. So, um, Todd says, I'm coming up on two years for my project. I must embrace autoplay. The must and the autoplay in all caps, says Todd B. <laughs> That's funny. Clear says, we're here. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, folks are the difference between your Cleveland Spiders. At, at, right, so tell it, right, saying to Ken, he says, we're here for you, buddy. These folks know the difference between your Cleveland Spiders and your Providence Grace. That's very true. So, Ken, you do have a place here to talk 19th century baseball, at least on this channel, and it's encouraged. Um, the only baseball fans I've ever known of uh, 19th century is this group. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I love it. And that 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 and and so it is fun to be niche in that way. I'm not knocking you other guys out there that are content creators. You know, in fact, keep on doing the 70s, 80s, 90s, 60s. That's well, the 60s I'm trying to get into just for my own edification and education, but that's cool. You know, you can leave the dead ball in 19th century, 20s and 30s to this humble little channel. And I'd be totally fine with that. You know, not that I'm an expert in it, but I have folks in here that are brilliant in it. So, cool. It's cool. As Ken says, cool, that's heartwarming. Thank you, bud. Nothing more frustrating. Well, there are a lot of frustrating things, like, you know, having blue balls and that. But, that being said, right, if you have something in which you have such a such a passion for, and most people you meet are like, you know, yeah, but I don't really care. It's it's frustrating. It is. It is. It really, really is. Okay. Well, let me know, Robbie, and I'm not, and, and please, 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 please don't take this as pressure. I would be willing to, you know, with the Diamond Mind League, sometimes when I get done with streams here, I'm like, I don't really feel like announcing a game. And I can I can reel off a whole bunch of those those in Diamond Mind. So Robbie, if it is something that you'd like to hand off, you will still always get credit. It's just that we're coming down to the end of this, and um, you know Clinton will get a little bit of a pass because he's doing it in Cards and Dice. So just let me know, or if I can help with it, maybe you could do get 60 games of it done just auto playing it, because you're not streaming it or anything, which is which is cool, or not recording it. Because we would like to, you know, hopefully get a comparison, and no knock. It's not a knock. You know, you do you do tend to go off on a lot of different projects, and um, you know when you get back to it is you know I don't want to be in the middle of our Negro League thing down you know close to later, and um, you know we're we're sort of visiting that McGreevy. Once it's done, it's going to be done. We'll do something dead ball in 19th century down the road again. Just let me know, buddy. De so again, not a knock on you, Robbie. It's not. Um, I know that you're, you know, that you really love dead or that you really love baseball for Windows, and I know you really like Diamond Mind a lot. It's just that we are really. Um, I know many have said that that really curious to see how this is going to play out on the two other platforms as well. So, um, but yeah, Robbie. That's cool that you're going to get back to it. Can't wait till you do, man. Just auto-play them, man. It's not like you have to manage them out or anything. We're looking really for just how things are going to be results. Um, but that's up to you, buddy. It's it's your thing, but let me know if I can help. Because it would be nice to get it, you know, to get them. And, and Because it will be nice. We'll have two digital environments versus cards and dice for at least part of it. So thanks, man, for what you're doing. Appreciate it. Glee Baseball fan says, I appreciate the players that uh, played in the era up until the 1940s, but doesn't fully get me interested to want to play. And so here's the thing, Tim. That's cool. That's really cool. But you're not knocking it. And that's the issue I have with, with it. You're not knocking it, okay? You appreciate them, but you're not interested in that era of baseball, right? So where you're finding a lot of people in here that there, there is an interest in 19th century, in dead ball, in 1920s, 30s, and 40s, right? But you're not dismissing those eras and decades of baseball either. If you were, and, and Tim, I know you well enough to know that you're way too smart to say, well, sorry, but Tris Speaker, Ty Cobb, Walter Johnson, Hannes Wagner, uh, their stats don't mean anything. I know you wouldn't say that because you're a smart fan. You're a smart fan that's just not. You know, it's interesting to you from a kind of scholarly thing, but not to get immersed in it. And I, that I can respect, Tim. I absolutely can respect that. And I think anybody else in the channel here in our little chat would say, yeah, absolutely, we get it. We absolutely, we get it. It's the reverse for me. I'm not terribly interested in 2000s baseball. I'm not. Um, I love baseball, and I'll watch it. You're not going to ever see me do a, 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 unless, you know, I live to be 307, 
then maybe I'll do a, a project on 2000s baseball. But it just doesn't interest me to that point, and I get it. Um, Brandon Breed says, nothing dead ball in your 1934 action PC replay, except the fact that the 1934 Cardinals were a hell of a mix between dead ball tactics and power ball. Oh, my God. Big Clue says, blue balls? You've waited 43 seasons of counting since your last World Series. Shouldn't you call it black and gold balls? Ah, ah, big clues in rare form tonight. Big Clue, if you're an Indians fan, you know I'd have a great comeback for that. But we won't go there. Todd B., ignoring dead ball would be like ignoring Washington and Jefferson when it comes to studying presidents. Exactly. Ken is not interested in 1980s baseball. So that would be interesting. Um, Ken Kestra says, also willing to bet that most of the guys in this chat have read more than the average number of 19th century books. Absolutely. So Dr. Harold Seymour's, uh, right, so uh, his very first volume, Baseball of the Early Years, required reading. You should read all three volumes. Unfortunately, Dr. Seymour passed away. You should read those all. Ken, I have sitting next to me the Great Encyclopedia of 19th Century Baseball. When I pick up any baseball history book, the first section I go to is the 19th century. Um, that's our game. You know, our game went through, I think, more developments, right, which makes sense in the 19th century. And the game that we play today, even with, with, with the change in tactics and everything, largely was the game that with the introduction of the foul strike rule in 1894 and all that establishment and everything. Yep, in a way, we are still playing a 19th century game. So that's the other reason why I, I think it's super important. It's super important. Even knocking it, someone could conceivably have a reasonable argument, says Big Clue, but that's not what I'm learning from a certain corner of YouTube. And no, neither am I. No, neither am I. And, and I know that... Look, I'm gratified that, and, and, I, and I'm sure Cousin Ken is, because we were, again, guys, this is something he and I wanted to do for a long time, a long time. How can we do something with older baseball knowing that it's not going to get a lot of response from the community? Surprisingly, it's gotten more response than I think either, neither, that, that, that either Ken, neither, neither Ken nor I had even thought would be possible. He and I used to joke that we would probably be the only two people in here. And instead, people have been following this. And it's been amazing. Um, and, and this was never something to try to build the channel. We just wanted to do this, and hopefully that maybe a couple people would be like, hey, this era of baseball is interesting. I'm seeing pretty cool comments, not only in chats, but in, in um, on the videos, and people are saying, you know, I kind of interested in dead ball now, or I'm kind of interested in 19th century, or at least, hey, you've got me looking at baseball before the 1980s. Hell, that's mission accomplished, man. I mean, world's worst gamer, and 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 I don't think it's because of our league. He already had that interest. World's worst gamers playing federal league uh, baseball. I mean, come on, that is awesome. And so somehow found that MV. So he used to actually consciously try to avoid this channel and then found it, and he's got this love of dead ball baseball, and holy hell, he's in first place right now. <laughs> so it is a good thing. Um, Ken, have you read, ever read any If I Ever, if I ever Get Back by Daryl Brock? Um, I did. I did. That is 18... That, that's about the 1869 Red Stockings, Todd B. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's called If I Never Get Back, and if that's the same title I'm thinking of, and I read it years ago. It is about the 1869 Red St Cincinnati Red Stockings. Great stuff. Thank you, Todd B. Yep. It's a great book, cousin. You'd love it. Um, cousin Ken saying to Klee Baseball fan, and by the way, guys, um, do do please subscribe to Klee Baseball Fan 879, affectionately known as Tim, formerly known as Tribe Pan. Uh, Ken Castro says, Tim, um, I've been driving around looking for grave sites of 19th century players in your area. You got to get down here to PA, Ken. We have a few here, too. More than a few, actually. And, of course, a lot of dead ball um, players.
players too. Christy Mathewson's uh, buried not far from where I live. And Eddie Plank. Oh, just so many. God. Oh, I get it, Robbie. Like I said, I mean, just if you can need help, if it starts to get a little bit, you know, into May or June, and you're only in game 20 of Diamond Mind, I would really like to help at that point. So why don't we put it that way? I mean, I mean, your playing times is your own, and I get it, and it's all good, buddy. But um, just it's kind of a favor if we can just get it done. I know you like to read the autoplay, um, but you're ta you're you're talking. Uh, it's going to take you the entire year. That's why we have to autoplay games on here, my friend in our Ned McGreevy League because Todd had asked her, are you going to broadcast every game? It's like, no. <laughs> no way. No way. Unless I could somehow, if I could find a billionaire who would also be delusional and think I could actually broadcast like the other guys and say, tell you what, buddy, I'm going to pay you $35. Uh, no, I can't do this by the hour. That's nothing, man. You'd have to pay like you know, give you like two hundred dollars um, a game, buddy. I I I would be I'd be twenty. You know I'd be doing it. I I would have done every game. It would have been fun. But so whatever. It's no biggie. It's no big deal. Didn't realize um, you can visit Ed Delahanty. Yeah, absolutely in Northeast Ohio. That is super cool. Um. And Todd B. said he finally got to Thurman Munson's grave. His white wet wife went with him. She didn't get it, but it was sad. Something about when you visit those grave sites, how about it? The inclusive just tried right, missed out on the start of the McGreevy League. Can't wait for the Koufax League, which is what you're looking at here. Yeah. Cy Young buried uh, 40 miles uh, from about where Todd lives. Sorry you missed a too big clue. You would I think you would have had a lot of fun with this league. So But no, Tim, I hope you understand. I get where you're coming from. I really do. I mean you're not you're not that you're not one of those guys that's just saying, Well, this baseball doesn't count. That's just willful ignorance. And you're not like that. You're just not academically you're just not interested in it. It's a whole different thing. Whole different thing. What's this, Robbie? What can you remind me? What game number you quick simmed one action PC before we started playing games? No, I have no idea, Robbie. I can't remember. That was in October. This is January. I have no idea. But I know what we usually do is we do one game a night and we then we sim everything else out. So, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to say, oh, you must do this or else, you know, we will. Uh, boil your 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 nose in oil or something. Just that um, if you try to do every game because you like to read a play by play, we're never going to see. We we it will take you at least a year because that's ten teams and 154 game schedule. And so if you even if a game takes a half hour, if you do the math, that's a lot, right? So, like I said, I mean, we appreciate what you're doing, Robbie. I, I'm just, you know, hope. I was just, that all that was in Discord was just asking you, hey, you know, where is this? We haven't seen anything in a while. That's all. Ken Castro says, my wife drove with me for two hours looking for a play from 1884. Had to buy her dinner, though. Yeah, but to do that, man. To do that. Because you know what? Most people walking through those cemeteries, you know, and not all of these graves are going to be marked that this person was a was a baseball player, you know, and and I mean to do that, and and so how many people, right? I mean, what was it last week or two weeks ago, cousin Ken? You saw you went to Charlie Buffington's grave. How many people set out just to go to Charlie Buffington's grave, and and so I think it's awesome that you remembered him and to do that. And yeah, you do have a good woman. My girlfriend would be like, yeah, drop me off at Bloomingdale's and you know, go hunt the graveyards or something. So, I get it. Anyhow. So, Klee Baseball fan, do appreciate um, what you do on your channel. I really, really do. I like what you do on your channel a lot. 
I like what most folks do on their channels here. I just don't like when Dead Ball and 19th Century and anything before 1970 gets slammed. I think that's just, I hate that. And I am still waiting for that person to grow a pair and debate me. Please debate me. I'll be nice, I promise. I'm a good Orthodox, come on. McDonald's counts as dinner. Oh my god. Funny. Um, Ken says, I was driving around the old Grays Park, now condominiums. God, let's not get started on that one, right? Um, he was going to slow. People were looking out the window. thought it was a drive-by, apparently. Oh my god. 35 years. God grants you many, many more, cousin. God grants you many, many more. All right. Anyhow, what are you guys rolling up? What are you guys doing? What are you playing? Baseball or not? What are you guys up to? What are you guys doing? So, the world's worst gamer said he was a bit getting a bit burnt out on baseball and was looking for some other games one night and ended up in a baseball chat anyhow. He says, I wish I knew who the person was. I can't figure it out. I watch many channels, and I don't know. No, I, I know I know who the person, person people were knocking. Dead ball baseball. I was sitting in that chat. I, uh, and so I, w I was there, and I'm actually a moderator in that chat as well. Believe it or not. Except I wasn't moderating that night. I was just I just felt like lurking and when that was like what? And yeah, so Yeah, <laughs> Ken Rick, I wouldn't mind owning a model T. God. Uh, Big Clue says moving house. Uh this month, so until that's done, the fun stuff's on hold. Alright. World's worst gamer. I went out earlier for dinner with a friend. Um to the east side. I got away from baseball and other crap I watched. Well, nice, 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 nice. Always good to take breaks. Always good to take breaks. And is Ken Castro asking if East Side Mario's is still in business? Where's our Steve Tate, man? Where is he? Crunching numbers, I'm sure. Crunching numbers, I'm sure. Harvey Warburg says some of the best moderators do lurk. Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll do that um, in, in, in Jester's chat. I'll just lurk. And then I'll say hi to the guys at the end, but what they don't realize is I'm there. They usually don't get bothered there, though, because they're. That's a bunch. That's a cool collection of guys. If when 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 ID Jester does his like his war room chat and the board game chat reminds us kind of a lot reminds me a lot of the community that we've kind of our little community that we've created here, you know these guys are sitting around geeking out about war games and board games and stuff like that just like we geek out and hang out like in Steve's chat or mine and we're just staring at rosters or whatever and I like that and big clue. Um, sent me, uh, put a real nice comment on the video I did last night. And he said, yeah, he said, you know, go listen to the other guys. And they are, they are really good announcers. He said, he said, with you, I feel like, you know, you guys, I'm hanging out with a bunch of friends at a baseball game and we're talking baseball. He said, keep doing what you're doing. And that means a lot to me because uh, that's really what I want this channel to be. I, 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 the game's incidental. You know, I can play all these. I can play all these games offline, but then you miss the camaraderie of baseball. And I'm living with a bunch of f-ball fans, so it's not like, you know, anytime I get to go to a baseball game, it's by myself. So I miss that. So I kind of get that that sort of hanging out when when I was you know back at university and stuff like that. And um, also one of my wives, believe it or not, so married twice. My second wife was a humongous, actually both my wives, believe it or not, humongous baseball fans. We used to go to 
Now, my first wife and I, we used to go to independent league baseball. We went to a lot of major league baseball. My second wife and I, we went to a lot of um, uh, AAA minor league baseball. So I was very lucky in that regard. But, you know, I miss, you know, hanging out with my, my you know, again, I've explained they, they loved the game, but it was teaching them just about the game, but I miss hanging out with my friends, you know, my baseball fan friends and stuff like that from from university days and grad school days. Um, so I, I kind of get that with you guys. So, yeah, there's a sort of selfish motive involved here. I get to talk baseball with, with, with knowledgeable baseball fans, whether you're interested in the era that I'm interested in or not, and whether I'm interested in your era or not. At least we're talking baseball, and I love that. Uh, Tim says, I'm currently into the worst part of every Cards and Dice replay, September. All uh, right. So, Star 29 of the 1967 McCormick replay was uploaded about an hour ago. So, now I have to figure out what the Cubs were, um, or what Cubs were on the roster on 9 September 1967. Tim, if you have a second, why don't you just put a link to your channel into the chat, please, for these guys. Appreciate it if you would. All you can eat pasta. All you can eat pasta soup and salad. Oof. Well, see, I'd be all right because since I'm vegetarian, I wouldn't have had to pay that extra money. So, I'd I'd be all about as if, as long as it's good pasta. Huh. Just just show me the way, man. I'll work it off the next day anyhow. It works, so why not? Okay, there you go, guys. Klee Baseball Fan 879 putting a link um, to his channel. Do check it out. Good stuff. Um, and I mean, Klee Baseball Fan is also a fan of other games, too, and you'll see him about. But um, Tim, I'll tell you what, Tim has perseverance. And um, I like, so, so let me take a minute. I'm going to give Tim some love here. So Tim started out with his channel. Basically, this was back when he was Tribe fan, right? And there was nothing wrong with it, but what he was basically doing was recaps of games that he played, right? Which is cool. Nothing wrong with that. But but Tim's evolved now where he's actually, um, he calls a very, very entertaining cards and dice game. It's really, really good. Um, you can tell he's done his homework on the seasons that he's doing. Um and you're going to learn a lot of baseball on, on Klee Baseball Fan 879's channel. So do yourself a favor and check it out, guys. You know, you wouldn't think watching some dude chuck a dice would be entertaining, but it is. It's good stuff. And that's why, even though I get no mentions from these other channels, um, I always suggest RJL Network. Um, RJL makes it a lot of fun. He gets excited. He gets into that loud broadcaster voice. Because I've heard him do other games, and he's more subdued. But when he does baseball, buddy, it's full on good stuff. So do check out the channels of um, a lot of these other broadcasters um, in our community. I can't say all of them, but a lot of them. They're all very. They're those are very good people, along with our Red Sox fan and our own Christopher Slovak. And I say our own because he is in our Ned McGreevy league. So he's he's ours. He is ours. <laughs> all right, so. World's Worst Gamer there, subscribe to Klee Baseball Fan. Nice. He says he's going to give it a, sh a shot later. Um, well, there's one grumpy old person or grumpy person in Maine that just won the Mega Millions, Todd. I wonder if it's Clinton Parks. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, anyhow, Klee Baseball Fan, I'll probably work this into the next baseball telecast. One of the members <coughs> of the 1960 Cubs traded to the Cubs from the Cardinals to the Cubs. Uh, Ted Savage had passed just three days ago. Memory eternal to Ted Savage. No, uh, is it loud announcer voice really, or is it loud New Yorker voice? Big clue talking about RGN Network. And then Christopher Slovic coming in just as I mentioned his names. It's great to see you. Listening again from work. Yeah, not not much of a game. I think we're just kind of talking tonight, Christopher. But it's great to see you. All right, and. Klee Baseball Fan 879, thanking World's Worst Gamer for the subscription. 
Christopher, let me know the next time you get to the Commonwealth. And let's, uh, I will come across state to my old stomping grounds and we'll go out and have a couple rounds. It's great to see you. It's rare that we get to see you, but it's, it's really good. Really, really good. Ken asking Christopher, how is um, Action PC Hockey? Maybe, maybe Christopher might want to answer that. That'd be nice. Play the world's worst gamer like uh, Nolan Ryan versus Rob Ventura, grumpy old man. So Christopher says to Ken about Action PC Hockey that he's going to get that um, Action PC League set up tonight. If you guys don't know, Christopher um, works in Pakistan, so it is it is morning for Christopher. It is tomorrow for Christopher, and for him it is yesterday as he talks to us in the past. Love it. He had an epic rant about it. Oh, I love epic rants. I love epic rants. Dude gets around, right? Don Zimmer versus Pedro Martinez, grumpy, Christopher Slovak. Okay, so you're going to be back in June in the first week. At 926, right? I know you're far away. All right, I'm going to be coming over to the to w the western part of the Commonwealth, which is the superior part of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Christopher will get out. We'll at least talk some baseball, and while you're a brilliant announcer, then we're going to have you kidnapped, sent to uh, Dave Cook at Action PC Baseball, and he's going to make you do what Ernie Harwell did for baseball for Windows, and it will be awesome, awesome, awesome. Big Clue says his New Year's resolution is to avoid bad mouthing Strat in light of Wizards of the Coast shenanigans. Oh my God! So, so shall we talk about? Let's talk about Wizards of the Coast. Let's talk about it. I don't know if, if Big Clue and I are the only two here that even like know about Wizards of the Coast, but what a bunch of douches, man! What is the what? What's the deal? What is the deal there? Wizards of the Coast. Oh, my God. Todd B. says his New Year resolution was to lay off Ken. He failed miserably. Okay, world's worst gamer knows about the Wizards of the Coast. Huge news, huge potential implications. So for those of you that don't know, Wizards of the Coast started out this humble little company um, actually, one of my best friends, his brother went to school with Richard Garfield. They both went to the University of Pennsylvania. Garfield was a math major, but he was also a game developer. And so he developed a game called Robo Rally, which is really fun, by the way. Um, and so he kind of shopped it around, and people were like, well, this is kind of nice, but do you have something more portable? And eventually what came was the largest collectible card game ever ever made and one I still play digitally on both Forge and Manalink um, and I used to play paper is Magic the Gathering it's brilliant it is a brilliant 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 game and Wizards of the Coast just took off kaboom and eventually Hasbro bought them um, who they also bought uh, what TSR so Hasbro owns Dungeons and Dragons. They own Magic: The Gathering, and um, there's been so so Magic just recently had its is it is it 40th anniversary? I think it is or 30th or something. So they put out this thing, this collector's edition, where you could buy like these booster packs that had. So in Magic: The Gathering, there was these cards called the Power Nine, right? And you can't play them in tournaments or anything like that because they, they can break the game. They can break the game. But if you play Forge or Mana Link and you're playing against AI or Fred, you can play all the Black Lotuses and Moxes and Time Walks and all that that you want to play, right? So they put these things out with different card backs. You can't use them, and they charge people. It was like, I think to get everything was like $1,000.
and just gouging players. It's just absolutely crazy stuff. Now we get into the big thing. So Big Clue says they were challenged in court about um, revoking the OG Allset's original game license, and they were to win. God forbid you would see a similar thing with IT and open source code. Yep. Dungeons & Dragons is a billion dollar game now. Bigger property for Hasbro than Monopoly. Yes. And if, if there's any game player out there that believes that Hasbro gives two shits about you, you are so sadly deluded. They don't care. Hasbro does not care. Bottom line, baby. Bottom line, it's the money. Um, but there's some weird stuff going on, man. Weird stuff going on. So... Lord of the Rings is going to be incorporated somehow into Magic the Gathering later this year. I So imagine the, the muscle that took. Robbie, you were talking about Japanese League Baseball, Hasbro getting permission from Warner Brothers to use, right? Because I think they're using the movie rights. It's either that or the Tolkien estate. Whichever. Getting the Lord of the Rings license is, is like... That takes some serious, serious simoleons, man. Yeah, right? Imagine that licensing fee. What do you think? I wonder what Hasbro... It was like when Apple paid for the Beatles catalog. That was a ton of money, and Paul McCartney said, no, it's not ready yet, and then it finally was. And, um, a cool $660 million before a single Beatles song was even done on Apple Play. Hasbro had to pay through every orifice you could imagine to get Lord of the Rings. God, that's insane. Yeah, I, I, I that that money is just nuts. Um, but they've had some missteps this year. I, that new Capella expansion to Magic was just weird. I don't know what that was all about, but regardless. Uh, there's going to be a lot of implications for um, open source and like the open source gaming license actually is what the original OGL is. Um, and there's actually a really cool game on Steam you guys should check out called Low Magic Age, by the way, which uses the open source uh, gaming license, which is neat, neat, neat stuff. Don't know how much, how long that'll be around or what will be around or whatever. Gotta follow it and see. Christopher Slovak says, I like Action PC because they've helped me when things have gone wrong or needed something. Action PC is better than Hasbro. Damn right. Damn right. Yeah, if, you know. So, uh, yeah. Because, what was it a few weeks ago? Steve Tate said, yeah, I fired off an email to Dave, and he got back to me like a minute later. Try that with Hasbro. Try that with Electronic Arts. Try it with um, Activision Blizzard. Try it with Ubisoft. So, Dave Cook, wherever you are out there, man, bless you for creating something amazing and not getting all corporate on our sorry arses. Big Clue, so Lost the Crown of the Magister is the most, like, actual Dungeons & Dragons team. I love that game, actually. They used the, um, yeah, the, the open source game license and kickstarted their game. It's pretty cool if you like electronic. Yeah, I think it's a good game. Graphically, it could use a bit of tarting up, but I'm not a graphics whore. So Lost is amazing, and you can make your own dungeons. You can create your own modules. Celasta's amazing. Celasta's amazing. So, for any of you uh, that like to do some dungeon delving and stuff, you would do a lot worse than checking out Celasta Crown of the Magister. Good stuff. Big Clue, I didn't know you were, um, didn't know you were a, uh, like into role, a role play, like RPs and stuff like that, RPGs. It's awesome. Most Baldur's Gate 3 is still open beta three years later, right? You know, that being said, though, um, Larian, Larian Studio is a damn good game studio. Just played Divinity Original Sin and, and, of course, its sequel, which is just out of the park, if you pardon my expression. Um, I think Baldur's Gate 3, if it's ever, like, actually fully released, I think it's going to be pretty amazing. I, I have hope. Many different interests. Nice. Yep, those are both of them. Yep. Robbie, please, t you've never heard of the Baldur's Gate series? 
really? That's interesting. That <laughs> right. Todd B says he's still trying to get that damn chicken across eight lanes of highway in Atari. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? We're finding that sweet spot. Um, oh, God, what's the game? What is that game now? It was a Galaga. Finding the sweet spot in Galaga, buddy. Where you can just sit there and just blast. Okay, well, Baldur's Gate. Okay, so Robbie has the first Baldur's Gate. The second one, Robbie is considered by many to be possibly the greatest CP CRPG of all time. Um, it's it's superb. You could you could put thousands of hours into Baldur's Gate 2. The first one is good. The second one is a bloody masterpiece. It it really really is. Just don't go into it looking at for you know. I mean you, it's showing its age even the enhanced edition, but. Baldur's Gate 2 is phenomenal, and you don't need to play the first one to play the second. For you youngins, Dungeons and Dragons isn't just the grandfather of RPGs, it's basically the grandfather of video games, too. It certainly is. Christopher Slovak says, I remember Freeway, the Atari check in game, which is, of course, based on Frogger. See, now some night I really got to fire up those emulators and stuff, and we can go. Go down memory lane and show our young Robert Wartburg some of the things that uh, we spent our right uh, misspent youth and misspent quarters, or were they misspent? It was fun. I don't regret a single quarter I spent in an arcade. Loved it. Friends and I would go out Fridays, man, hit pizza joint, and then it was on to the arcade, buddy. Good times, good times, and arcades are making a comeback, which is nice to see. Clee Baseball Sam, Be uh, um, Beatles, if you played E.T., the Atari game, if anybody could actually play it, if you guys, you guys, Clee, Tim knows about the, the right, so E.T., the Atari, like, apparently this game, like, the dude had, like, 72 hours or something, because Atari went to cash in on the E.T. game, and um, you, there, you can actually find documentaries on the game that Tim's talking about. Check it out. It, it will it will blow your mind and in fact there's and of course New Mexico right but apparently the, like Atari tried to find every version of the ET game every cartridge and supposedly it was buried under tons of concrete somewhere I think in New Mexico or something so terrible game terrible terrible game ET it just really was Shadowgate, good stuff. Huh. Tim says he had it when he, uh, he had it, it, what he says to Big Clue it was, and when he had it, he, uh, he was a kid and managed to finish the game. E.T., the extraterrestrial. Give it up for Tim. So we have Brandon Breen finishing an APA replay, and Tim actually finished E.T., the extraterrestrial. Buddy. Much, much, mucho respeto. Nice. Uh, molto respeto in Italian. I'm sorry. The first time I've ever met who did. Kudos to you for sticking it out. Oh my god. Big Clue says his youth was fine. It's his adulthood that's been misspent. <laughs> Funny. No, the two games. Oh, so. Um, yeah, Celasta Clown, Crown, yeah, Clown, jeez, Crown of the Magister, and um, Baldur's Gate, or no, that that was the only one I mentioned. The only one was Baldur's Gate three, or was oh Divinity Original Sin and Divinity Ori Divinity Original Sin two, um, both phenomenal. Jeez, other ones, God, Robbie, Pillars of Eternity, Pillars of Eternity two, Tyranny, um. The original Dragon Age. Some good stuff to be had out there in CRPG land. Pretty baseball fan. Now the hardest one that I did was beating 30, all 32 levels of Super Mario Brothers without dying only once. You're a legend, Tim. You're a legend. Todd B. found his ET cartridge in landfill. Christopher says... E.T. is not the worst game. It's glitchy, but there are far worse games. 
I know I'm in a minority here, but I would play E.T. over Raiders of the Lost Ark game. Ooh, yeah. All right. So having these emulators, looking back on some of these old games, did you guys ever see the Intellivision version of Zaxxon? It doesn't resemble Zaxxon, like, right? Because Zaxxon had the cool sort of isometric perspective, and wow, yeah. Pitfall. Remember Pitfall? Back in Atari games. There were some cool Atari games. There was, there was a couple cool. River Raid was a fun game, man. River Raid was pretty fun. That was all right, and um, I can't remember what else. My my big thing was though really um, was like Commodore Amiga and 64, C64. It's never really much of a console game. In fact, I have a PS4 sitting over here that has been plugged in in three years. I'm just not a console gamer. But River Raid was fun. Yep. Tim is also a world class trivia guy. That wouldn't surprise me. Tim's super smart. Wouldn't surprise me in in the least. It wouldn't. We, we gotta get Tim on Jeopardy. That's what we gotta do. Not when it comes to literature, art, and opera. Well, I can take the literature and art part. Now we just need an opera geek, and we'll be good. So, so Tim, I take it then by your omission of it, that means we do, that you love history, we have a shared love of history. I, I absolutely am a complete history geek. Complete and utter history geek. I love, love history. Because of those, pre well, opera would kick my arse, too. I know <coughs> La Rusticana Cavalleria and Carmen and that's pretty much it. And uh, the only reason I know of the former is because of the third Godfather movie. Pop culture. Well. So, so how many people here, and you can still buy it, it's still around. How many, just, just put up, I don't care, some emoji or some letter in the chat or, I don't know, flip me the bird, whatever. How many here at least once have played Trivial Pursuit? Come on, where come on, where are you Trivial Pursuit people? Good. World's worst game. There we go. We got there look at it look at the look at the hands coming up. There we go. These are Yep. Uh, of course Todd being a contrarian has to do of course, but that's fine. Clinton Park, look at this. Look at this. Hey, for every main nine in Clinton Parks, welcome in, guys. Nice. Okay, now here's the next question, and you got to be honest. you got to be honest, man. All right. Good morning to you. For every main 90, tuning in from Germany. So, all right, guys. Your weakest color, what was it? Was it a weakest category or, or the cat, whatever, color category in Trivial Pursuit? What was it? Todd B says he saves his one figure salute for Ken. So what was your weakest? So for Robbie it was yellow, so that's history. That was my strongest Rob. My two strongest were blue and yellow. World's Worst Gamer says no clue. Brown, yep, that was literature. Ken says what weakness. Clinton says green, I think. World's Worst Gamer says probably all of them. World's Worst Gamer, come on, you can't bullshit me, you're smart. Nice try, though. <laughs> nice try, man. So the one that always got me was sports. Um, Clinton Park says literature. I would fake people out. And they would hit me in the middle. Mine was sports because my friends knew. They knew that the only questions I could answer were baseball questions. And it, in, er, in 
invariably it would be that I would get uh, that'd be the last wedge I would have to get, and it would be a football question, and I would lose. And life sucks. So there you go. So sports was mine. I forgot what color sports was. So big clue: science and nature for him. Never played the Canadian version, Clinton. I actually played the Dutch version, though, which was interesting. In Dutch, which really hurt my brain. And it did horrifically. Sports is or is it orange, Robbie? Okay. Yeah, I that was I, I, I would be right there and they would be like in nineteen sixty seven Johnny Unitas passed on I'd be like, What? Who? I lost. One question was not in the U.S. version. Uh, Forever Remain 90 says anything with art. Okay. Uh, Big Clue says, True story, last time I played a trivia game, it was his 40th birthday. His then wife gets a question asking for which country did America earn her independence in 1776. <coughs> so, oh my God, she blurted out, I don't know, China? Oh, ow. Ooh. Yikes. Hmm. So, that's, uh, people are staring open mouth at, at Big Clue. Oh, my God. That, okay, that, that's like rubbing salt in the wound, right? Clinton Parks, how many, uh, months was Nancy Davis pregnant when she married Ronald Reagan? Good Lord. I have no idea, man. Obviously didn't marry her for a brain. She must have been hot, 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 man. And I respectfully, respectfully, you know, didn't marry her for a brain. I don't know. I think that's... She could have actually said... So there there would be a way around this, though, because she could say, well, you know, uh, you know, the Chinese have bought up, you know, like, like a large part of Times Square, but, you know... Now that their you know economy is kind of leveling out and tanking, we are gaining our independence from China. So there is a way out. There is a way out. She's left the Gettysburg Addresses where Abe Lincoln lived. But um, boom, tsh. name the two presidents that were cheerleaders. Are you serious, Christopher? Seriously? Wow. Next thing that you know, she may miss was who's buried in Grant's tomb. Says uh, Tim. Christopher Slovak actually named the president. And the Wrestling Hall of Fame? Alright, you guys are scaring me now. She got no respect, wink. Abraham Lincoln, I might believe. Well, yeah, wasn't George Bush a Yale cheerleader? Well, I know he played baseball at Yale, George Bush. So, oh, the others were Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Dwight Eisenhower, and Ronald Reagan. Wow. <coughs> so I know George Bush played some base. Was it Yale? Was it Yale or Princeton that he went to? Princeton. One of those, whichever Ivy League school. I know George Bush played some baseball. Abraham Lincoln in the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Abraham Lincoln also was a baseball fan. Christopher Slovic says he only lost one match ever. I wish we could somehow do a trivial pursuit, trivia contest on the channel. That'd be fun. I'd give away a copy of Baseball for Windows or something. Dwight Eisenhower had no choice. Be a cheerleader. Big Clue says who's the only member of both. Oh, this. Oh, Cal Hubbard. Big Clue. It is Cal Hubbard. That's one I like. That that's that's uh, it's one I like to get. Uh, uh, F ball fans on. So Cal Harbor is a baseball umpire and then whatever he did in F ball. I got one right. All right. Give the man a cupid doll, or as we used to say in the carney, we have a Lugan here. We have a Lugan here. I can't tell you what Lugan means, but if you want to try to find it in a carney dictionary, I would get shut down if I give you the definition of what a Lugan was. Christopher Slovic said I had to Google the cheerleaders to make sure. Okay, so it was Yale. He had a 986 fielding percentage at Yale. Nice. Never played the silver screen version. Yeah, somehow Ronald Reagan 
was a cheerleader, bizarre. Tim says, there are many favorite baseball questions I have. Who's the only pitcher to win back-to-back -back MVPs? What pitcher gave up Hank Aaron's final home, final home run? Oh, I thought you were going to say his record-breaking home run. Oh, man. What have I done? What have we done? This is great. I'm just going to answer Cal Hubbard to everything. Who's the head of the Corleone thing? No, I know that. I could, I, I'll kick your arses in Godfather movie trivia, though. Bring it on, bring it on, baby. Godfather Part 1, Part 2, I'll take you on. But, anyhow. Christopher Slovak have to go. Also, Nixon and Reagan were carnival workers. And I'm a liberal. Wow. So I'm just wondering. So I have something in, in common with two pretty mega conservatives. Interesting. Thanks for, uh, and have a great day, Christopher. Thanks for stopping in. Last switch hitter. This has to be a trick question. This has to be a trick question. Who is the last switch hitter to win the American League MVP award? I'm not, and nah, it's a trick question because the reason I say it's a trick question is because who I think it is is who it's not going to be. Ken Castro says Vita Blue. Ken Castro, bingo. Yeah, see, I would have lost. Um, answers are how new house were 1944 and 45, and the answer to number two, what pitcher gave up Hank Aaron's final home run? Dick Drago. Yeah, I would have said Mantle, so clearly I would have been way wrong. Because I just... When I think of switch hitters, I just automatically, my brain just goes into Mickey Mantle mode, so. And clearly would have been wrong. I, I yeah. Vita Blue, how about it? So Clinton says, bring it about Godfather trivia, huh? We'll have to set something up, Mr. Parks. For just the first two, though. The third doesn't count as a movie. It's a Godfather movie. So, Clee Baseball fan in every position in baseball has had a player uh, win back-to-back -back MVPs. That's really cool. Oh, you, oh, Ken, Ken, Ken. Ken, you're an evil man. You know that, right? <laughs> 2019. <laughs> be something like who stepped on base to get Fred Merkel card out for Merkel's blunder or Merkel's boner um no that was beautiful cousin that was beautiful little inside joke if Robbie reads that one closely he should crack up but that was beautiful Clinton Park shooting in there with Johnny Evers who knew it happened in Pittsburgh two weeks prior was part of it actually the Cubs were playing the Bucks. Um, Clinton Parks has played two more out of Digital Time in baseball. Wait till you see the version 11. That's Are you serious? Good stuff? Is there actually going to be like good stuff in Digital Time in baseball version 11? I hope so because I played version 10 like for like eight minutes and just said, ah. Oh, okay, got it. So, yep, Luke Gehrig, switch hitter um, in 2019, baby. And Ken and Robbie and I will keep that amongst us. I think Clinton knows the joke, too. Status Pro Baseball is going to be part of version 11 of Digital Diamond Baseball? No way. Okay, I'm buying it. I'm buying it because I love Status Pro Baseball. Will you be able to cart, like have your own seasons or card your own seasons, Clinton? Just because you can do your own seasons in Digital Diamond. That's why I'm asking. I guess I better go see what he's doing, huh? Nice. Okay, that's cool. Status Pro Baseball, part of it? 
Midlife crisis. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. That is brilliant news. Status Pro Baseball? I love Status Pro Baseball. To death, I love it. Big Clue Beatles is the only guy on YouTube who can discuss the national agreement and then the story of controversy with equal deafness. Big Clue, I'm impressed, buddy. You're, you, we're, you're talking Nestorianism? Nice! Love it. Well, apparently you can too, my friend, because you recognize them both. You know, I you know the heretic that I always feel, felt got a bad rap and I thought was pretty cool was Pelagius. Sorry, but I thought I thought Pelagius was a cool guy and I think the church was uncool to brand him a heretic. So there we go. If we ever want to have a chat about Pelagius some night, come on over to the Beatles Eternally channel and we'll talk about Pelagius and other heresies. Big clues got me started now on heresy. Jeez. Tap it off. Check it out. Status Pro Baseball page at Facebook. Yeah, Clue wins. Yeah, Clue wins. Clue wins. You're a recovering Christian apologist. Uh, Midlife says, tough day at work. Passed out in your recliner. Just got up and already got most of the night's sleep. I hate when that happens. I got home from work today and said, yeah, I'm just going to lie down for a half hour three hours later I'm like uh, uh, uh. so yeah yep one of the lines in King Arthur with Clive Owens about Pelagius I'm still trying to figure out what was so bad about Pelagius I mean reading it and what a good guy I mean I think Pelagius is pretty cool <coughs> and I know that my um, the Eastern Orthodox slash Byzantine Catholic priest would hear me talk about Pelagius and probably have a cow, but I think he's a cool dude. Certainly better than uh, some of the other guys. I was like, Arius wasn't his fault, but you know that we have a certain sect of door knockers these days, but it is what it is. Anyhow. I like that King Arthur movie, by the way. It was pretty cool. We didn't have uh, Guinevere and Lancelot doing the horizontal uh, horizontal rumba, so that was fine. Car generator in the game, so you'd be able to play it like a cars and dice game. So when when you're saying there's a car generator, and I am going to look this up, you're saying that you could I, you can create your own status pro teams. Is that it? that's what you're saying? Oh yeah, take Pelagius over Gustin. So I don't know. Clue. I don't know what your denomination or pre-denomination, whatever, but I'm sure you're aware. So in the Eastern Orthodox Church, um, Augustine is not a saint. We refer to him as Blessed Augustine, but he's not. We don't recognize him as a saint because he kind of, you know, he's sort of, yeah, messing about with predestination. We're like, ah, dude, maybe not. But you know who else I think got the crap end of the deal? was Origen. This this guy, how many times did he translate scripture? Origen. And, and yeah. Uh, anyhow. Big clue, you and I should have a heresy chat some night. I think it'd be fun. There was a card game years ago I found at a gaming store that was all about ancient heresies, Sibelianism and uh, Pelagianism, Nestorianism, all the all the all the great heresies. And so I I got it for my um the priest at um, Holy Trinity Orthodox Church, and he just he loved it. He loved it. He said he and his family played. His wife and his uh, sons played that the game all the time. And I wish I could find it again. But yeah, I'd go back to the second century. Absolutely. Let's go back to Saint Ignatius. All right. Let's go all the way. Let's go back to Saint Polycarp. Let's do it. Saint Clement of Rome. Let's hit the Apostolic Fathers. Why not? Let's do it. Robbie says, Ken Castro, I should let Lou Gehrig be a switch hitter <laughs> and scramble game if I can find one. Funny. Steve Tate comes in as we're talking about ancient heresies at 11.59 p.m. 
Yeah, we d yeah, I didn't learn I didn't learn any of the good stuff like that in Catholic school either, but I served my 9 years and then I was paroled. So welcome in St Steve Steve, what's your favorite heresy? Do you have one? <laughs> I don't know. Mine's Pelagianism. I'm I'm I love Pelagianism. Yeah, I only did 9, Ken. I I got I got I got early release from Catholic school. Oh, I believe in God too, Clinton. I do. I'm 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 an Orthodox Christian, but okay. Uh, so this is not a heresy. This is a blessing. Steve Ted Steve Tate says he has 50 players done for the Negro League file. Nice. Todd says he could never get into Status Pro. Yeah, same here, Big Clue. Totally agree with you. Clinton, I didn't... You're not a Catholic. You're Catholic now, Clinton? I didn't know you were a Catholic. You were still Catholic. You graduated from St. Thomas Aquinas. Wow. Clinton has every season of Status Pro. Ken has Status Pro in his garage since 2012. So, so Clinton and I are the only Status Pro fans in here? That can't be. Heretics! Only thing I cared about in school was going to the arcade, playing Dungeons and Dragons, and collecting baseball cards. Amen to that. Yeah, I have Joseph Treger's uh, The People's Chronology sitting over here. and Oh my god, history, history, history. Maybe I should start a history channel, but I'd be dinged for that, right? If I called it the History Channel. Which isn't the History Channel anymore, by the way, right? It's a bunch of dudes making axes. And then hitting things with them or whatever. Ken Castro says he remembers doing apostats in class. So Status Pro is going to be part of Digital Diamond Baseball. Holy man. That's huge news. Big Clue says, I discovered Status Pro at a flea market in my 20s. I talked to my first wife, a Cardinal fan, into playing with me. Very first game, Ozzie Smith makes two errors and she quit, calling it unrealistic. Oh man. This is your first wife, so not the one that said that we gained our independence from China. Just keep a track here. Todd B says we would draft APA teams before we could see the cards as kids. That was huge fun. And um, Steve Tate says my best friend just subscribed to Slovak's channel yesterday. Loved his uh, basketball streams. Okay, so Miss China was number two. All right, keep a track here, big clue. All right, let me look at here. Let me let me look at let me look at let me look at. No way! Oh, wait, no, that's. Oops. Okay. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, why is okay? There's a picture of Stratomatic baseball in there, so but I'm not even watching the chat, so I'm looking at this looks great. New version, the addition of Status Pro cards is worth the money, even though it's not my main game. Can you back into it? I work in here the schedule generation. What I'm hoping that Mark does, and it might pull me back into the game, would be plant. You would have would be you the way working with libraries is 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 atrocious in that game. So I'm hoping that Mark will work on that. Might pull me back into it, and if Mark could take some constructive criticism from 
knowledgeable baseball fans like Clinton. Okay, so the first wipe was the evil one, the second was the crazy one. Okay. Steve Tate still has not mentioned his favorite heresy. Steve, we're not letting you off the hook. Yeah, just click on Robbie, just click up there on the, the, the link that Clinton Parks put put in. It's on Tapa Talk. Digital Diamond Baseball that I'm playing and is your your it's not my Ned McGreevy League, it's our Ned McGreevy League, but okay. Yeah, I know that. I just I just hate working with, with um seasons in that thing. It's so weird. So hopefully Mark can work on that. It might be hard code in the game, maybe he can't. But if he's gonna put status pro into the game, I might just jump back into it. So big clue or my favorite heresies is the one that became orthodoxy. That's right, baby. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Orthodox. We've been here for two thousand years. Try the uh well, I don't know. It depends on what flavor of Orthodox you are, I guess. I'm a liberal Orthodox. Very liberal Orthodox, actually. So, Who's also a, a, an ordained chanter, reader in the church. Go figure. Late to the game. Well, okay, so Steve is trying to buy some time here. Steve, we've been talking about everything. We haven't played any baseball. Steve, the question of the hour is... What is your favorite ancient heresy? Right? Come on, man. Clint Park says, I'm a bit of a theorist. I think Dan Brown was on to something. Um, mushrooms, maybe? I don't know. Dan Brown. Dan Brown, a Neo-Aryan. A-R-I-A-N, by the way. Not A-R-Y-A-N. Definitely Arianist leanings in Dan Brown, among other things. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hey, Dan Brown is on to something. He made a lot of money. But then again, so did J.K. Rowling. So. Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons. Yeah. It's still popular by a certain uh, sect that knocks on your doors. They're Aryan. They're Aryans. Midlife crisis. I I just think we may be a big alien experiment, and we're failing miserably. Ain't that the truth, huh? Right. The only difference is millennials think Hogwarts is a real place, right? <coughs> oh, I like J.K. Rowling too. Here is a broke mum hanging about and becomes a billionaire writing these 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 really fun novels. Yeah, I, I have nothing against her. It's just that Dan Brown, you're right, was on to something, and so was J.K. Rowling, and both made tons and tons of money. Robbie here trying to save some money. Says, wait, so I don't need any Status Pro stuff to play Status Pro. Then apparently not, Robbie. Okay, Steve gets a pass. He says the only ancient documents he's been into involve the Negro League. So you said you're up to 50 players. 50 players. That is awesome. I'm going to change this to, it says, great greetings, Professor Falcon. Should we play a game or just talk baseball? I have to edit this or just talk ancient heresies. All right, there we go. And the United States independent from China? I don't know. No, we'll just talk or talk um, ancient heresies. Who knows? Maybe I'll get some of the big Catholic apologist channels on here, um, like uh, Reason and Theology and Council of Trent, those guys. Get Trent Horn in here. He would love this crew. Um, Pints with Aquinas. That's another good one. All right. Anyhow, we have two twenty-five teams ready to battle. Damn it! I wish it wasn't too late. I would say let's do it now. 
but I guess we'll do it Sunday. Independent from China. I should have started that anecdote. I shouldn't have shared that anecdote. We'll leave it lie after tonight. Besides, I just put or just talk ancient heresies. So it's all right. Ken Castro says, do it. Well, we could all go to Steve's house and he could do it. He did all the work. No, we know it's not out yet, Robbie. I mean, you know, he doesn't usually... He releases about the time of Out of the Park Baseball, so... But, um... Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Clinton says he's reading the ancient Celts Vikings from around the 4th century, the 5th Saxons, good stuff. Sunday? Alright, so Sunday... Is it going to be on your channel, Steve? Oh, head to head. What with these Negro League teams? Are you serious? You want to do head to head with the Negro League teams? The, the two Negro League teams, huh? Holy moly! Okay. Well, I guess we'll meet on your turf, dude. We'll do it. I'll be hung over, but that's all right. Let's do it anyhow. Let's do it. Let's do it. So. Clint Park says Saturday he's in Boston. Uh, Going to see um, Hamilton, then heading to um, Parmiter Street for dinner. Nice. Okay. So... Um, Steve Tate says he's going to do it on his channel, which is only right, Steve. You did all the work. I don't think the debut of these players should be on my channel. You did all the work, so. Hungover? Don't worry, so will half the players in the team from what I've read about Negro League history. And I can have the Pop Lloyd team. Sweet. Thank you, man. I, I, that's an honor, because Robbie's going to be a dork in the draft league and probably take Pop Lloyd first because the way he took Hannes Wagner in the Ned McGreevy league so Robbie I have to tell you about my family's Cosa Nostra background sometime before the next draft so just saying anyhow so what do I have up here on the screen no we're not going to play a baseball game I don't think this is that 60s draft league that I did just for giggles on Action PC Baseball. Um, put like 10 managers, and I had the computer draft these players. And I'm really, really kind of just looking at the stats at how pretty well balanced these teams are. So this will be after Ned McGreevy. Um, you got everybody can just grab a team, and, and these are pretty evenly split that w it will be. Um, how well, you know, just how can you manage and, and, and whatever. With just ten, a 10-year ten pool of players, there's you've got great guys, very good, good, and a few. Eh. I don't think Marv Throadberry made it in, though, with 10 teams in the 60s. So these are pretty strong teams. So, And it, you would be at a disadvantage. You can look there and see, you know, some of the leaders and kind of figure it out by looking over at the win-loss thing doesn't even have a schedule yet but there's some extremely good players um, geez you got Koufax, Marischal, Gibson, Drysdale, Bunning, Ford, Dean Chance, Sam McDowell, Stottlemyre, I mean Mike Cuellar, Joe Orland so just in, in pitching you've got some th this is going to be a fun fun 1960s league So, Robbie says in the past he's tried Digital Diamond, previous versions, and shelved them. Cannot explain why. I shelved the first version I played way back before I knew this community existed because it just wasn't fleshed out yet. Um, but then the next version was because of the lack of fielding. Um, then the next version just because um, Mark was sort of being a douche to a few people. 
and he was. So, but uh, it'd be nice to have some. I, I wouldn't mind revisiting the game. I have it sitting on Steam. I have versions eight, nine, and ten, but I have I haven't played that game. I played ten minutes this year, if that. Digital Diamonds, it's decent. It's decent. Still needs some work. What was the question? Interesting pictures. What algorithm did I use to come up with these? For these pictures on this, this is, um, again, just using, and I know, right, as I have, I'm like Steve, I have pretty much everything for action PC baseball. But for this, I just thought, you know what? I'm just using the baseball history collection. So there it is. And that's what is used. So, yeah, Mark's not even keen on it. Yeah, version 9 was kind of not so good. Good clue. Where are the players of the Kofax League coming from? Best season? Uh, this is the, It's coming from the Baseball History Collection. No. I mean, I, I, I mean uh, whether if Clinton wants to relive the story or not, but they're... We were both shocked at whatever version it was. I think it was version nine that Roberto Clemente had the same arm as like an average outfielder. There was no range factors, no arm, and it was like the original answer that I had gotten was, "Well, it really doesn't figure as part of the game." Well, holy shit, really? Fielding doesn't? How can you say that? And then after some pressure, Clinton was doing a lot of play testing at that time. Um, there was some disrespect shown there, and so I just decided I'm not playing this game. Disrespect somebody as knowledgeable as Clint Parks, not cool. So, ah, uh, but you have, uh, but but he's saying the version ten plays nice. Okay, good. I mean, I'll try it again. I would try it again. If you guys want to see version 10, I mean, I can install it and show it to you. I didn't put any pictures into it or anything. So, has some cool things you can customize play by play. You can chuck your own dice and put in the thing. Um, digital Diamond Baseball appeals to both the dice player and the digital player. I just didn't like the um, the disrespect shown to a couple people by Mark, and I hope that he's mellow. Get Clinton Bear with me here. If anyone has kind of volunteered to test my game, I'm treating them with respect. Absolutely, treating their feedback with respect. Yeah. And 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 Clinton offered so many solutions, things like that, and he was treated like crap. And you know, this is not in a character assassination of Mark, but rather his words that were not cool. Now I'm probably giving myself even in a bigger world of shit with the community that I'm already in a world of shit with. But that's okay. How can you have a baseball game where fielding isn't a factor? Right? I wouldn't play it fielding ratings or something and pride myself in as as well you should. You know? Yes, he also beta tests for... And uh, here's a real big name, Ron Bernier, for those of you who are APA players. You know the name Ron Bernier. Big, big, big player um, in the Apple community, and and I, I mean that both literally and metaphorically speaking, whatever. Um, if you dig deep into, uh, you'll see that Ron Bernier did a lot of stuff, a lot of really cool stuff for baseball for Windows, and a lot of stuff for Apple. He's he's a big gun in the sim gaming community, and also he says Clint says for Cyrus D'Amato. Uh, what the killer was, according to Clinton, uh, was a whole working space for fielding stats, and Mark didn't know it was there, and then Clinton went off. But, for good reason, and I'm the one that got the answer that the fielding um, really wasn't a, a big enough factor in the game, and I was like, what? That might, I don't remember which version that was. Oh, so Clinton Parks says that Ron Bernier lives about uh, 35 miles from here. Yeah, 
he'd be a, a, a cool guy to talk to. He's been a long time player. Uh, Tony Atlas from the W, the World Wrestling, WCW World Championship Wrestling. Mo I think most developers do. Uh, I just want to know who the lucky bastards are that are getting to, who got into the closed beta test for Diablo 4. Tried my damnedest. So now I've just got to wait till the open beta, which hopefully comes out next month. I'm going to play that game so badly. That's going to be on my new channel, though, the one I'm not telling, or I'm not going to, I'm, I'm creating a new channel. This one stays alive for baseball, but I'm going to create another channel for baseball gaming, history, astronomy, experimental music and eventually magic. This is just going to stay baseball. And ancient heresies. Sorry, ancient heresies. And Clint wants to, he wants to know the ones who beta tested um, 2023 golf. I don't even know who makes that game. Is that like a uh, an EA game? If it's EA, forget it. Big Clue says, what channel is Beatles Eternally? The other is Beatles Secretly. Yeah, because I'm not telling you guys about the other channel because that's cheating. That's cheating. I've got to try to build it from ground zero. And how many people in here really want to sit and listen to a, a, a whole, you know, an hour stream about, about music theory? Right? Does anybody in here except me really care about the Mixolydian mode? Probably not. Or um, diffusion scattering in Blender, or whether an Oberheim matrix filter um, is more versatile than the original Prophet 5 filter, whether using the Curtis chip or otherwise. Probably not. So I'm actually going more niche in a way. And music theory, not so much. Monophysicism, different story. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready. Maybe we'll do the third one. Let's. It'll be Big Clue and I. We could do. We could. We could do, like a heresy channel, and I think it'd be brilliant. We'll do a heresy channel. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be fun. I'm about it. Midlife says, "Keep trying." I registered to be a beta tester for MLB The Show. After about 800 hours of playing the show, 17, he got it. Now every year they message me to download the beta. So I'm playing MLB The Show three years ago. Clinton still reads Warhammer. Yeah, so on my new channel, Clinton, that's what I'm actually going to continue that playthrough. And um, not, only, not only Warhammer, Inquisitor, Martyr, 40,000, blah, 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 blah. But I'm also going to be playing Sanctus Reach and Armageddon, Total War Warhammer 1, 2, and 3. Probably mostly 3 because of the Immortal Empires campaign. Um, which spans the old, the new world, and brings in Grand Cafe and all that. And also going to be doing uh, Mechanicus, Battle Sector. You get the picture. There's going to be a lot of Warhammer on my new channel. So I know some of you guys are into Warhammer, but I, I don't want to cheat. So if you hear of a new gaming channel that's being goofy and boring, that's probably going to be me. Need MLB the show for PC? Couldn't agree with you more, Steve. Don't know why that hasn't happened. It should. Armageddon, do you tough place? Clinton, have you played Warhammer Gladius? Warhammer 40k Gladius? Or Gladius, whatever. It's superb. They just came out with the uh, Asuratus expansion for Gladius, so if you're a Warhammer gamer. Big clue. The only Warhammer I'm familiar with deals with uh, 1d8 bludgeoning damage on a hit. So you never played the Warhammer like Warhammer Fantasy RPG, Big Clue? It's pretty cool. Okay, you just read the novels and novellas. That's fine. Warhammer, rich lore, whether it's 40k or... I, they're not calling it Warhammer Fantasy now. It's what, Warhammer the Old World now or Age of Sigma or something. They dropped the fantasy moniker. But Warhammer 40K gets way more love than... I'm still calling it Warhammer Fantasy, just like I still use the term Cleveland Indians. 
so. Clint says, I'm over in the lexiconum. So you don't want to mess with librarians in the Warhammer 40k world. They'll put a smackdown on you, believe me. Watch with interest. The only thing about Warhammer gaming, boy, are we going all over the place, is if you play Warhammer 40k, the tabletop, you better have a lot of money you if you want to build some armies, which is why I play things like Sanctus Reach and Battle Sector. Because I can't I have friends that play Warhammer 40k tabletop. Oh my god. The money that you can put into War Warhammer 40k tabletop is just bloody insane. Games Workshop. Wow. So they're working on the Horus Heresy. Uh, you had a brief foray to Battletech, but never Warhammer 40k. Warhammer, yeah, Battletech is. Um, a dear friend of mine from university is a Battletech, like, complete geek in Battletech. Who's worst gamer? Beatles. I still swear that I am Pierre Polevre and going to be the next PM of Canada. Is that good or bad? Is that good or bad? Because I just saw a YouTube video that uh, Justin Trudeau kind of got ignored by, like, all these other, was it, like, other MPs or something, and Justin's kind of sitting there, and this guy, like, I guess Justin Trudeau, like, reached his hand out to shake hands, and this guy, like, turned around and shook his hand with somebody, and this is, the, this is the, the Prime Minister of Canada, for God's sake. Anyhow, Steve Tate says, Beatles, am I available tomorrow during the day, or Friday during the day? We could go live and do a team draft with Negro League. Play on play Sunday. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I am I am definitely available, Mr. Tate, in the afternoon. Friday, unfortunately, I am not. Watch Beatles. Steve is looking for a hot date. Aaron Reed. Aaron Reed coming in here at 12:27 a.m. on the East Coast. Welcome in, and I will listen to him. World's worst gamer. We'll, we'll definitely check it out. It's only a day away. Welcome in, Aaron Reed. Everybody, you know Aaron Reed, who mostly comes in during the day when we do baseball for Windows. Aaron, had I known you were coming, I would have bored you to death, and I would have broadcast a game myself. But welcome in, bud. Good to see ya. Good to see ya. Aaron, do you have any favorite ancient heresies, by the way? That's uh, kind of the price of admission tonight, although you can stay if you don't have one. But if you do have a, a favorite ancient heresy, um, you know, please do uh, let us know in the chat. As we have um, quite a few august scholars of ancient heresies here. Uh, chief among them being Big Clue, who is probably um, the greatest heretic of all, and this is why we embrace Big Clue. Okay, so Aaron Reed does not have a favorite um, ancient heresy, and that's okay. Uh, so 2 to 3 p.m. my time. I can certainly rouse my arse out of bed by then, Steve. Definitely. We would do it. We'll do the draft on your channel, right, Steve? We'll do it at your house because you have cookies. World's Worst Gamer, I looked up stuff about heresies and only got a headache from looking. <laughs> Come on, heresy's fun. Heresy is is so I mean we're not talking about the like the you know the obvious stuff, but I mean heresies are cool. Heresies rock. Big Clue says the greatest heretic. You've been listening to my former Sunday school teachers. <laughs> <coughs> so so Big Clue, would it be safe to say were you a material heretic? See because we're going to get them now because there, there are different types of heretics even, which is kind of fun. So as an ex-evangelical, rep <laughs> I represent that remark. All right, well done. So you're an, you were a, a, an evangelical apologist. You and I at one time might have locked horns then, right? We would have locked horns at one time. Not that I would ever be so arrogant as to actually say that I would be 
a very good apologist of the early church at all, but I at least tried. World's Worst Gamer says, only heretic I know was the Doom game mod that turned the, the turned into, or the Doom game mod that turned into a game. Steve Tate. All right. This is going to be on Steve's channel, guys, and he says he's going to ping me on Discord tomorrow. Should be fun. Because we're going to have a televised draft tomorrow between 2 and 3 Eastern, guys. So Steve um, out there in Mountain Time. So we're going to do a draft of uh, a couple Negro League teams. It's going to be fun. Let's do it. Forever Remain 90 is going to be there. Uh-oh, we got a short story team. Time. So, oh, he's got plenty of horns left to lock. Just not from a fundamentals. Well, that's not as fun, though, really. Because, like, I usually don't. I mean, because with mainline, mainline Protestants, it's more like a. Yeah, I, 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 I can tell you that I've never gotten into a heated discussion with with a Lutheran, with a United Methodist. Um, with a regular Presbyterian, um, you know, the Church of the Brethren guys, they're pretty mellow. Anyhow, um, he was a heretic. He was a youth pastor for an Assemblies of God church. And a friend of my wife found out that I that he played Dungeons and Dragons, which she knew nothing about, save from that leftover satanic panic crap. Yep, thank you there, Tom Cruise. You guys, or Tom Tom Hanks, if you remember that movie. What was the name of that movie? Holy shit. Anyhow, um, so he, he was asked to publicly renounce the game and take a two-week, quote-unquote, vacation from teaching and serving. People made serious money off that satanic panic of dungeon of D&D back in the 80s, man. Or, what, 80s, early 90s. Man, oh, man. I had the coolest mom ever. She always... My D and D group, we'd all get together. Mom would make like huge dinners for us and snacks and stuff. It was pretty awesome. That's that's wild, big clue. Mazes and monsters. Thank you, world's worst gamer. Big clue says I refused. And the minister's parting shot was, I hope this won't keep you from coming to church on Sunday. And I said, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Nice. He so so big clue, and you are the only person. Wow that I know of, he literally lost his job over the satanic panic. God, crazy. Clinton Park says, um, I'm at work and we're going to be running hard as we have a bit of snow coming Friday. Um, should have gone to Royal Island first, but Ken is scaring them off with a 6 by 6 foot photo of himself. Ouch. Uh, Big Clue says, we scoured the county for a version to sacrifice in our next Friday night game. Nice. Love it. If, hey, live big, live large, my friend, right? Live big or go home. That's a great story. That is a great story. <laughs> oh, my God. Love it. I just watched that Mazes and Monsters movie last. I wonder if that's what Tom Hanks would like to forget. What do you think? Steve said um, he had some static fear. We had Kiss Alive 1 and 2. <laughs> oh, my God. The clue is not a member of NC Sushi where you're expected to check your brain at the door. No Kool-Aid for Clue. There you go. You no, know, what's one of the things, I'll just say this, that attracted me to orthodoxy, even though, as I said, I'm, I'm politically very liberal, so a lot of orthodox aren't. Um, but... You know, it's it, it was just the priests were saying, no, con question your faith constantly, 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 constantly. Because if you belong to any belief system that says you can't question, it's false. And I like that. I really, really like that. So, but I'm not here to convert anybody. I'm just saying that's, I, I just, I really love orthodoxy for that. And I've, I've asked some doozies. Including, I asked Father John one night from my old parish where I became Orthodox, whether... Uh, quick story. So I came to Orthodoxy by way of a Pentecostal street preacher. So real quick story. And you don't even have to know ancient heresies. So this is a Penn State University. 
and he is now my godfather in the Orthodox Church. He's pretty famous, especially if you're a Penn Stater. He's the Willard Preacher, and I even think he has a YouTube channel. He's a dear friend of mine, though. So, and I used to work after I graduated. I wasn't ready to go to grad school yet, so I worked for Penn State for a while. It's one of my being in here, this country. So, and so he's walking down the steps of Petit, or in front of Petit Library one day, going down to where he would preach in front of Willard. As outside, nice day, having a smoke, checking out the sophomores and stuff like that. It was a beautiful day in Happy Valley. And he was carrying two books, and one of them had the Cairo on the spine, right? So, for those of you, that's like the PX that you see on, like, Paschal candles and stuff like that. Well, Gary was a free will Methodist. He was like a fundamentalist version of the Methodists, which United Methodists, even John Wesley, would be like, dude, no, what were you even talking about? I said, and I said, hey, man, because Gary and I would argue, like, big time, and we finally just agreed to disagree, and we be became friends that way, because he used to trash on, you know, the Catholic Church, and he didn't know anything about the Orthodox, but he was the Catholic Church and ancient Christianity, and he was all about sola scriptura, all this kind of stuff, and don't question anything. And so I said, I said, what, what is a fundamentalist doing reading a book with Cairo? And I said, that, that writing to me doesn't look like something from, uh, you know, the local primitive Baptist church. He said, there, there are these kids down there, and they belong to this something called the Orthodox Church, and they're talking about these guys called the early church fathers, and so I'm reading these early church fathers, and I'm going to prove these kids wrong. And I just laughed, and I said, okay, good luck with that. Because, big clue, you would know this, right? That, that, that what did Cardinal Newman say, right? When you, when you get deep into history, I don't need to finish it from there, right? But I just chuckled. I said, good luck with that. Because if he's taking on, right, people who were disciples of the original apostles. So somehow things got really busy at Penn State. We're doing a big shift of our map collection and all that kind of stuff. And I was the curator of it at that time. Not long ago. 20 years, actually. And um, finally, I was walking down one day to lunch, and I noticed that like the the Gary wasn't doing his so much "you're gonna burn in hell" type stuff and all that kind of thing. And I thought ah, I'm just gonna go downtown have lunch, and I'll come back. I came back. I said, "So how's it going with these early church father guys, as you call them?" He kind of sheepishly grinned. And he said, "I'm a catechumen in the Orthodox Church." So um, yeah, it was it was really really interesting. So. We're talking one day before, and, and, and now he's trying to convince me to go to the Orthodox Church, and I'm a person, I left the Roman Catholic Church. I'm like, no, I'm done with this. Are you kidding me? Right? Uh, I'm just, I'm not doing it. He said, no, 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 come on, you got to visit Father John. I ended up visiting Father John. I'm like, okay, I'll start going to inquirer's classes. And that's you get to ask anything and everything you want about ancient Christianity. So one day Gary and I were sitting before we went to Father, or we went to the to Holy Trinity. He said, "Joe, you ought to ask Father if, in a game of trouble, if if since the dice rolls are truly random, could you beat God in a game of trouble?" And this actually, this little anecdote is what kind of got me really attracted to it. So we're sitting down there, and so to describe this priest really quickly, silver hair, ice blue eyes. But when he laughed, I mean, just, just he had that great belly laugh. But Father John was also really, really serious when he had to be. And so he comes in. Hey, Father. Father bless. How you doing? And blah, 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 blah. And he said, okay, do we have any questions from last week's, you know, discussion? I said, yeah, Father, I have one. And I, and I asked him. I said, so, I said, could you beat God in a game of trouble since dice are random? And he kind of looked at me ice blue eyes and he said he said you know he said my first name and all that right which most of you know me on Facebook you know my name's Joseph right he said he said there are some things we do not joke about and he said so blah, blah, blah. And he got really angry and I'm like and I'm looking at Gary who put me up to this he doesn't say a word the bastard <coughs> and at the end he came over he said look I didn't mean to be such a hard ass on you and yes orthodox priests they, they'll they're not like, you know, they'll, 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 they just talk like normal dudes. They're, they're married, right? It's all good. He said, I didn't mean to be a hard ass. He said, but just be careful of the things you ask. He said, but the answer to your question is no. He said, because nothing is random to God. So, um, 
Big Clue might want to maybe sink his teeth into that one. But no, you cannot beat God in a game of trouble. So now I'll know. But as a sleight of hand artist, and I'll leave religion at this, since nobody has any heresies, as a sleight of hand artist, if I had one fond wish, is if I would go to heaven, which ain't happening, guys, so don't make book on it. I, I'm not going. I would like God to let go of his omniscience and omnipotence for one minute so I could show him a card trick. I think it'd be brilliant, but it ain't happening. There you go. That was that was deep religion there, guys. I'm just telling you. All right. Um, God of Thunder by Gene Simmons from Kiss. Great song. Clint says, when I was 15, there was a Nazarene church across the street. Ooh, the Nazarenes, man, they're hardcore. My mom wasn't around. We'd play Arthur Brown's Hellfire while everybody was going in for the sermon. Clinton, you're the man. And blasted, I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you fire. Good stuff. Now, Clinton, I, you're, you're not a saint. Let's get real. Come on. <laughs> That's awesome, though. This, uh, Big Clue says that reminds me of the Simpsons episode uh, where he slips in the god of Davida into the organist's music. Don't worry, none of the rest of us are either, says Big Clue. Cool. We'll see you guys wherever, but it's, yeah, not going to heaven, man. Probably won't even go to Iowa for that matter. So, so yeah, don't make book on that. I think Robbie's the only one here that is going to have it. So, Clinton, Clinton is a saint now, huh? Well, every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. So there you go. My Irish great grandma taught me to play poker while she was singing hymns at the same time. So that should tell you. And I was eight years old when I learned to play poker. And I just great grandma would be, Ah, oh, Joseph, that's a full house. And then she'd start singing um, all these hymns and stuff. May her memory be eternal. Awesome. This was fun tonight. Damn it, this was great. Big Clue says, and we're resurrected to judgment. We're waiting in line. We'll have plenty of time to squeeze in some baseball. Sims, absolutely. Make sure you're buried with your laptop. I will. Definitely. We will do that, man. And it's going to be, it's going to be, uh, let me just tell you. Jesus, take your time. We're going into the bottom of the ninth. Right? We're going to go to the bottom of the ninth. And Boog Powell's coming up. And the bases are loaded. Let's do it. Let's do it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be cool, though? Right, hold up the final judgment. Right, I can see it now. It's a big clue and Cousin Ken Castro. They're going head-to-head -head in a game. And Castro's like, no, you can't send me yet. I've got, I've got Pete Browning coming to the plate. Right, and God will say, all right, everybody, hold up. We're going to catch these last few innings. And we do know that God is a baseball fan because how does, it be, how does the Bible start? In the big inning, right? Boom. Aaron Reed says, not to keep asking, but when are you planning to do a giveaway for ABBA Baseball? Just curious. Soon. Soon, Aaron Reed. Very, very soon. Get through the, uh, I'm, I'm in the throes, if you will, my friend, of a, of a new job. So, um, let me get through it, man. Just... And I hope you're not just coming to the channel for that, but you're coming to the channel because you like baseball and chatting with a bunch of crazy people like us who are all into ancient heresies. Um, but yeah, soon. So don't worry about it, man. It's it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It is coming. And the giveaway's rigged, Aaron. I'm going to get you a copy of Baseball for Windows, buddy. Seriously, I'm going to do that for you. just going to figure out how to do it. The clue. Damn it, man. Ty Cobb is up to bat. Wait, is it that Ty Cobb over there? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, we know where Big Clue has us going. If anybody's to believe Al Stumps, uh, whatever. I don't know. We know where we are now, man. Is that Ty Cobb over there? Oh, my God. So, um,. Jeez. Yeah, because I, I know where I'm going. I'm not going to see Christy Mathewson. So. Although he was a poker cheat. So I don't know, man. I might. But Christy Mathewson? 
I mean, I know how to cheat at cards, so maybe Christy and I could have a little discussion. He said, uh, Tom Brown or Tom Browning's rising from the grave to pitch another inning. Exactly. Exactly. Aaron Reed, you're going to be there with us, buddy. And we're going to hold up the great final judgment. And everybody from the Orthodox to the Primitive Baptists and the Four Square Gospel folks are going to be having cows. Because this group of ten people, we're going to be there on the judgment day, our great getting up morning. And we're going to be playing Appa and Strat. And baseball for Robbie be playing baseball for Windows, um, and and Steve Tate, Steve Tate is going to come up with. He is going to do a, a normalized league with sort of major league equivalencies of of all the Saints and the Roman Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, and Coptic and Anglican churches, and it's going to be brilliant, and I really really think honestly that St. Anthony of Padua should bat third. Just saying Steve. Just saying. We're all going to be there. That's right. We're all going to be there. And, uh, as Ron Juckett says uh, you won't hear this in a Fortnite stream. Holy hell no. Damn it. I mean we talked about Pelagianism and Nestorianism and you started it. Big clue with Nestorianism. You started it. So thank you. <laughs> Oh my God! So I'm happy. I'm two subscribers away from 300. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow morning and have like 270. So, but that's all right, because I know all the heretics are gonna hang in, man. All the heretics are gonna be like, "That's right. I'm a proud Sibelian, and I reach out to my Pelagian brothers and my Nestorian brothers, and my, you know, right there we go. And are we?" You know, non-Chalcedonian or Chalcedon, whatever, man. It is awesome. No, Christ is fully human and fully man. No, he is one divine nature with human tendencies. No, he's whatever. He's some guy named Jesus who's now playing in, uh, you know, Latin American winter ball. Since a short story coming on, I'll call it the final inning. <laughs> I think you should. <coughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Oh my god, right? Do a story about, you know what, send it on to Saber. Or somewhere. Somebody's got to publish something like that. Wait, you're suggesting this storyism is not a cult of weird delivery Yankee Southpaws? <laughs> Big Clue is one at, he's won the chat twice tonight. He's, he's going to break YouTube with that one. Um... Steve Tate says, sharing this great site for Negro League bibliographies, great research for the upcoming league. Let me, um... Oh, nice! Oh, wow. Holy... Ho okay, you guys have to check this out. You, you should go to this link now. Definitely. Seriously, seriously. Okay, so uh, I'm adopting Beatles' eternally serious voice now. You really, really need to go to the site that Steve just put in the chat. This is crazy. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Wow. There's Rube Foster. Pardon me, Rube Foster. There's resources for teachers. This is nice. Thank you, Steve. be looking into that. Biographies. <laughs> Dang on, oh correct. Big Clue says, my eldest uh, daughter got married last summer. Oh, uh, God grant her and her husband many years. Um, last summer he drove out to the wedding, her parents and nephew. There's something coming up. Big Clue, you didn't play some cards and dice during the, right? See, we lied to her about when we were going because I planned a detour with Dad to sneak through Kansas City the day before so you could visit the Negro League Museum. Awesome. Well worth the extra half-day travel. That's awesome. Steve's getting his bio stuff from that site. Ken Castro talked about having just visited the Negro League Museum. And uh, 
the beautiful uh, sort of thing they the bafangu they did. There's a, there's a picture of uh, Cap Anson in the Negro League Baseball Hall of Fame, and I love the irony, love it. I want to visit that the the Negro League uh, Museum so badly, Big Clue. I really really do. Ken sent me some photos from there. Um, oh, he put up some photos of the museum also in Discord. It was all awesome, smallish but real classy. Like to see Major League Baseball pour some uh, pour some simoleons into it. I think it'd be awesome. And some other folks too, like you know, some big sports corporations or whatever. And not not to corporatize it, but just say, look, here's the money. Make it big. It's first class, as it should be, as were those players. Nice. Jeez, I haven't even visited the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame Museum yet. And that is a shame. Actually, I, I more want to visit, like, I know the library's kind of not, like, where everybody can just visit, but I would I would sell my soul. More more for, than the museum part, I would work in the library. I would, uh, seriously, I want to work in the Hall of Fame library. But I don't. I just don't have the credentials. I wish I. I. I mean, I have the experience, but they'd never hire me, bastards. Is it Getty Lee? Cause Getty Lee is a baseball fanatic. Would it be Getty Lee? Big clue by any chance. Uh, Clinton says, job calls me to bed, unlike some eight people who tell me they are too busy doing what I don't know. Or some Rhode Island people. Sleep well, Clinton, and we'll see you soon. All right, Getty Lee, there you go. I got two tonight now. Getty Lee and Cal Hubbard. I got two trivia questions right tonight. Getty is a huge baseball fan. The usher pulled, uh, Big Clue says, the usher pulled me to side to tell me when I was looking at them, how cool is that? That is super cool. I think it's awesome that Getty Lee is like just mega baseball fan. Steve Ted says, so those today, Ken. Uh, Robbie was asking some, uh, someone for me to create a channel at the Discord uh, just for the Negro League project. Um, it's John DFW that has to create the channel. Midlife crisis. What he likes most about Cooperstown is all the shops have memorabilia. Uh, we went for Schmitty and Ashburn induction. Haven't been back. We may be back next year. I've heard induction weekend is nuts up there, because there's no like there's no major highway going in there, right? Up there in little near Lake Otsego. Mac. <laughs> Even though I didn't hear you say Great Britain, I'll give you credit for knowing it's not China. We Thank you, Big Clue. All right, I know I should have. I know you're right, but all right. So I got two and a half right. I got. Th I'll say two and a half, right? Oh, it's created. Okay, good. Insane. Um, so you stayed in a hotel in Oneida. Yeah, I've I've heard that that it's just nuts up there on induction weekend. So. I'll wait. Like that, to me, that would be like a nice trip to make in November, or like you know maybe in March or something or April. All right, so new channel in the Discord for Negro Leagues. Nice. So we got all kinds of stuff up there. Thanks, guys. I've noticed that there's lots of stuff and things going up on the Discord. So thanks, John DFW, for creating it. Thanks to everybody for participating and putting stuff up there. Um, I wonder if we can get John FW to do DFW to do a uh, what on heresies just for Big Clue and me. I wonder. Then 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 Big Clue and I can just go off and we can we can just happily talk about Pelagius and Arius and um, all the other suspects. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah.
we could put in there Nuttingism too. Bob Nutting, he's a heretic. He's a heretic. So. All right, guys. Well, this was fun. We went two and a half hours and didn't play a baseball game, which most people who visit my channel would say, well, Beatles, that's what you always do. Like, you never really actually play games, right? You talk to everybody. Yep. Only those conversations are with long dead authors. Same here. Same here. All right, Steve. Headed to sleep myself. And ping me tomorrow? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll be on. And it'll be fun. We would do a draft. And and you're going to rig it so I get Pop Lloyd, so that'll be fun. <laughs> All right, everybody's starting to drop off, go to sleep. Robbie, are you going to are you are you rec or are you recording or did you record a federal league game for the edification of all and sundry that they might catch tomorrow later, whatever? I was going to show you guys one of these 1960s teams, but I decided not to. <coughs> oh, I get first pick. Okay. Um, Pop Lloyd. <laughs> there we go. That's done. All right. Big clue says look for the game tomorrow. That's going to be on Steve Ch or, or Well, the draft tomorrow and the game on Sunday. Both will be on Steve Chade's channel. So, yeah, I, I made my first pick. Right about what twelve hours or so before the draft begins. So Pop Lloyd, awesome. Because Robbie can't get him then. Robbie, if you draft Pop Lloyd, buddy, I'm 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 gonna bring both my uncle Luigi and my uncle Seamus out there to Texas. Just saying. You 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 drafted my favorite major league. Right, my my favorite dead ball player, my favorite major league player of all time. If you draft Pop Lloyd, you're gonna meet you're gonna meet Sheamus, and you're gonna meet Luigi and Dominic, and Patrick. You're gonna meet them all. And I'm gonna bring Pelagius too. It's gonna happen, dude. All right, guys. I guess that's it, man. Here I am. I'm being like a wacko because I'm off tomorrow. I'm thinking everybody's off tomorrow, but we are approaching 1 a.m. and I'm going to watch the final episode of CAD File. If you guys watch CAD File, right? Uh, fictional monk, detective, lived in, um, what is it, the 12th century or 11th, 11th century, 12th century, whatever. It's the, you know, there's the war going on, and, you know, King Stephen and Empress Maud. I mean, he solves murder mysteries. It's Sir Derek Jacobi. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. CAD file. C A D F A E L. It's really, really the acting is 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 uh, pretty damned amazing. Sean Pertway's in it in the first season. If you're a Sean Pertway fan, I think you'll like it. He had a famous, very famous dad too, of course, one of the doctors. And Rob, Robbie really, really needs to get a hold of me because he's going to also be sending me a message in Discord. So a message and a private, wow, okay, this is important stuff. So please subscribe to Robbie Warburg's channel to Klee Baseball 879 to Steve Tate um, and all that stuff. Anybody have any final heresies? Uh, so Ken will be there tomorrow at 3.15, or before, as long as it's before 3.15, we'll try to get it wrapped up before then. So tomorrow's just the draft. Should be fun, and we know I have Pop Lloyd. All right, so thank you guys for everything. This was fun tonight. This was fun. And, uh, yeah, Cat File is no... Oh, 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 big clue. Firing the shot across the bow, he says... Cadfile is no William of Baskerville. Ha! Well, we shall see. Ha! So I shall pick up the gauntlet. So there we go. Pistols at dawn or something. Or holy water vials. Since we're talking William Baskerville and Cadfile. Good stuff. All right. My thanks to Big Clue to Ken Castro, Robbie Wartburg, Steve Tate, Midlife Crisis. Clinton Parks, 
Uh, midlife crisis again because he all, I always have to name him, get, name him twice so that way I don't forget him. Aaron Reed, world's worst gamer. Forever remain 90. Uh, and I think we got Klee baseball fan 879. Really, really excellent baseball channel. Did I say world's worst gamer? I'll say it again. World's worst gamer. And big clue again. See, I'll just say everybody's name as much as I want. Uh, Todd B, of course, we'll say his name twice. Todd B, nice. Cause um, yeah. All right, there we go. And this chat went so long, I probably missed because YouTube only goes back so far. That's it. Have a great day. See everybody tomorrow. Holy water vials at dawn. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, so I appreciate you one and all, and um, see you around the baptismal font. Of course, if you're not into infant baptism, that's a whole nother debate altogether. But we'll see you around the baptismal font and around the batting cage. And Robbie says message sent. All right. Take care, you guys, and see you tomorrow on Steve Tate's channel for a draft of two Negro League teams in which I have Pop Lloyd. Take care, guys. See you tomorrow.